The new season is upon us. The race for the planet is back, and this is Extreme E. Hello and welcome to Extreme E Season 3, The Race for the Planet. This is a sport with a purpose. It features fully electric SUV racing in some of the most remote and challenging environments of the planet. And look at that, it starts here in Neom, Saudi Arabia. My name is Nikki Shields and alongside me in commentary is Andrew Curley. Thanks, Nikki. This is my third season in this fantastic championship. And if you missed the first two, you need to go back and take a look. It's been absolutely action packed but it's not just about the action. It's about what the series stands for. We've got 10 teams packed with superstar drivers with one male and one female driver in each lineup. Off track, Extreme E looks at environmental issues and how we might solve them. We're already using hydrogen energy in the paddock and the race tires, for instance, are made using recycled plastic bottles and rice husks. Incredible. It really is indeed. It's also, of course, about leaving a legacy from the Arctic to the rainforest. Extreme E always leaves behind a positive impact. Plenty to explore, so let's crack on with the Season 3 adventure. So we start again in Saudi Arabia. Neom, third time in Saudi Arabia to kick off this brilliant championship. We've had incredible action at the previous two venues, and we've gone somewhere else again this year. This year, we're racing down at the beach. Then, of course, we're heading back across to Europe. Yes, indeed, our very first Scottish e uh, This is going to be our hydro x I should say. Uh, 13th and 14th of May, very much looking forward to that one. Then it's back down to Sardinia, third year in Sardinia, a really rough trap. We'll be highlighting wildfires and how the locals are recovering from those. Oh, we, we have seen some mega action there in the past. And then we've got a bit of a TBC. Where do you want to go, Nikki Shields? Oh, I don't know. Where are we talking? Hawaii? Oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah, so <laughs> TBC, North America, South America, we'll see. It, whatever it is, it will be an epic location. And then we will finish the season off in Chile, in the Antofagasta region, where there's the Copper X Pre down by the Copper Mine. Absolutely stunning location. Bit of a blank canvas there. It's a track with lots of jumps and elevation changes. I absolutely love it. Looking forward to that one. But we've basically got a new championship uh, this year of course we've got 10 challenging races over some of the toughest most diverse terrain in motorsport and this season promises to our, be our biggest and best yet so it's not just the calendar that's brand new we've got some fresh faces among us as well so time to meet some of the fastest drivers to walk the planet well, where better to start than last season's winners, X44 Vida Carbon Racing. Lewis Hamilton's season two champions have a new driver lineup with Jamaican Fraser McConnell replacing Sebastian Loeb to pair up with Christina Gutierrez in defending the Extreme E crown. Their biggest rivals are season one victors, Rosberg X Racing, with Swedish pairing of Johan Christofferson and Michaela Arlen Kotolinski, eager to reclaim their title after losing out in the closing moments of the season two finale. Oh! She's, rolled, she's rolled, and this is disaster. From spinning decks in Ibiza to spinning tires off the start line, new team owner and superstar DJ Carl Cox will be bringing a different kind of energy to the series. A veteran Extreme E lineup of Christine GZ and Timo Scheider will be taking up residency in the driver's seat. Motorsport royalty Neon McLaren joined the grid last season with Rallycross and X Games legend Tanner Faust joining McLaren's first ever female driver, Emma Gilmore. They learnt a lot in their rookie season, but can they start taking wins this year? Rally and Dakar legend Carlos Sainz Sr. will sadly miss this round injured. 
taking his place in the car will be Matthias Ekstrom, who joins teammate Laia Sanz in the Axiona Science team, who finished a close third in season two. Motorsport upstarts Veloci Racing shook up their squad at the end of last season, bringing in season one champ Molly Taylor and prizing Kevin Hansen away from close rivals JBXE. The instant effect in the final round of season two looked very promising for season three. Losing Kevin hasn't slowed down JBXE though, with former F1 world champion Jensen Button's outfit adding the experience of Heike Kovalainen to young sensation Hedda Hozas, who will definitely be expecting to replicate more podium finishes throughout this season. Number 99 GMC Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing are back with an all American driver lineup. RJ Anderson cements his place after stepping in last year, and drift star Amanda Sorensen slides in, looking to capitalize on the potential shown by the team in the previous two seasons. Andretti Altaquilet are the only team to have kept their original driver pairing of Katie Munnings and Timmy Hansen together since the first ever event. With good reason too, as this dynamite duo are consistently fighting for the top spots. Still riding high after winning the final X Prix last season at Abt Cooper XE. Five time Dakar winner Nasa Alatia combining with Clara Anderson, who grabbed her opportunity with both hands last season, scoring a debut podium finish in the Copper X Prix and then following up with their maiden victory. Well, every race circuit has its paddock. I think it's fair to say ours is in a pretty stunning location. Uh, and this paddock itself is chock full of motorsport royalty. One of them joins me now, Nasa Alatia of Apt Krupa. Welcome. Let's take a walk down this beautiful yeah. paddock, shall we? You're back for season three of Extreme. It's pretty good to be here, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, I'm so happy, you know, to, to come back and uh, for the season three and the, the season two for, for, for us. But... Uh, uh, nice to, to, to start here from Saudi. Absolutely it is. You picked up the win, the debut win for the team last time out in Uruguay. How will you continue that momentum with your teammate Clara? Yeah, I think it uh, will help us a lot, you know, after we, we win the last race in Uruguay, you know, and uh, Clara, she's le learning a lot and uh, I, we are here now. I give her all my experience, you know, because the track is uh, sandy and uh, I am sure we can do something and I hope to be in the podium five-time Dakar Rally winner. You've got a fair bit of experience. <laughs> Just tell me, who is the biggest threat, do you think? Who are the biggest rivals for you down this paddock? I think uh, we need to respect everybody, you know, because the, this season is completely different. There is no... Uh, it's, it's a straight away, you know, uh, five by five, you know. And uh, I think it will be an interesting uh, uh, race and uh, we try to do our best. I'm sure you will. Thank you so much, Thank NASA. You. Best of luck. I'm going to join... A man who has won this championship before and a man who has finished second in this championship last year. Johan, you come in for season three. What's the motivation? What's the mindset? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's always a big challenge with the CME. So happy to be back. Happy to be back with RSR and Michaela for another year. So, uh, yeah, start off now with zero points, everyone. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to get the season started. Absolutely. It's a clean slate for everyone, isn't it? How much did you learn last year? Uh, ah, it's... It's difficult to say, but you, you always learn things, I think, for every race and every outing. So uh, certainly, I mean, desert is not something that I've done a lot. So always uh, exciting to come to a race like this. Like this. And actually, we won uh, both Saudi races, season one and season two. So uh, even though it doesn't feel uh, like uh, this is my strongest uh, surface, maybe, but uh, it's also so many other things that have to come into play with the car, with the team, uh, with the cooperation together with the engineers and the drivers and so on. So, uh, but we will do our best. I'm sure you will. Thank you very much indeed. Best of luck. We'll now head to the defending champions, Cristina Gutierrez, with that stunning performance in Uruguay. I'm going to head through the garage to find her, weaving through the mechanics, all the action going on to find Cristina sitting here, Hello. defending champion, coming into season three. How has the mindset for you altered? from season two to now? Yeah, I'm very excited because we have a new team, we have a new teammate, and uh, we are very excited to this new season. Looks amazing outside, and also all the teams are crazy fast, so we'll see what happens in the, in, the, in the races. Yeah, I mean, these times don't lie. You guys are quick, and you've got a brand new teammate for this season as well, Fraser McConnell. How is he settling in? 
Yeah, he's very nice. He's a, a very young talent. Uh, he's so nice. He helped me a lot, and this is the most important thing: uh, good communication between us. And uh, we are happy with all the teamwork that we made. Well, great to see you back. Best of luck this season as well. And there they are down in the paddock. Great to see some changes to the driver lines. Couple of rookies out there, a new team as well. Very much looking forward to getting the action underway here in Saudi Arabia. So a reminder of the uh, green credentials of the XE race weekend on solar that you can see there on the left hand side of the graphic. We actually create enough solar energy on site to service 100% of the power needs of TV cameras, equipment, and also the power that's used for the Vodafone Business Command Center, which is all pretty impressive stuff. There's also this amazing bring your own bowl policy, which actually I did this morning when I bought my own cereal there, in my own bowl. There you go, you see, there uh, you take your part, <laughs> even though we're not in the paddock. Now this, yeah. is, this is impressive as well. So this is the Inoa hydrogen fuel system, which creates its own carbon-free energy on site. It's used to charge the race car batteries and supporting uh, power units at every event. The water that is generated as a byproduct from on-site hydrogen fuel generators is used to clean the cars. So some really, really clever initiatives down on site. So we're going to take a look at the track, which we're going to be racing on this weekend. That is the start, heading up into a 90 right. We haven't seen multiple cars in that corner yet. We know it's quite tight. Heading up then a kink left and the start of the Continental Traction Challenge at gate number three, left of your screen now. So that section, they'll add up the times of the two drivers in a team, the male and the female driver, put them into a ranking, and at the end of the weekend, they'll get two extra championship points. So at the end of the race day, because of course it's a double header now, two races, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Crucially, at any point in the competition where drivers are equal in terms of qualifying points, that's used as our tiebreaker as well. And Nikki, this bumpy section, we seen in free practice, some of the jumps and bumps, it's a tricky old track and, and the ruts are going to develop. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I love about this championship is that there is no one single line that you can take on each lap. They're constantly having to change, understand the lay of the land. Um, and it was really interesting to see the different lines that they were taking. Um, luckily, though, it's not too dusty, even though there's plenty of sand. Um, it settles quite quickly and there's lots of wind on the track as well to keep that blown away. So you've got the start, you can see the finished gantry there as well. Each driver does two laps. They have to nominate which driver is in the car at the start of Q1. The other driver will take the start in Q2. And then you go back to the first driver again for the finals later on. So that's that's how it works. Alternating drivers between, say, two laps. The first driver go through the finish into the switch. The second driver comes out of the switch through a lap and then ends at the finish. And there is that stunning long stretch along the beach front there. The Red Sea on your left hand side. It's going to be interesting to see who uses that Anoa hyperdrive to try and make up some paces during the course of the race because that looks like a potential overtaking opportunity does indeed and being in the continental traction challenge as well of course you can affect your time through that section see if you can get the old tie break maybe that'll make the difference in qualifying maybe it will make the difference in the championship at the end of the year all to play for So this then was Q1. Remember, Q1 used to be single car running. This year, we're doing racing in both Q1 and Q2. Great start for Axiona Science, but it was uh, Chip Ganassi Racing who were right there in the background. You can see people knocking uh, panels off left, right, and center. RJ Anderson driving for Chip Ganassi Racing with Matthias Ekstrom standing in for Carlos Sainz. Sainz, of course, who's still injured from his Dakar rally crash. Got his Audi teammate from the Dakar to jump into the Axiona Science machine. And Nicky, this race between Anderson and Ekstrom was incredible. They came into the changeover so close together. That was absolutely phenomenal. But RJ Anderson was just always just that little bit further ahead, just defending so well against him. So, uh, yeah, it was a, a successful race for Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah, Amanda Sorensen jumping in to take over the car. Lyas Sands behind. Lyas Sands was coming up close and trying to make uh, trying to make a move on the cars in front. This was the, the... I think this might have been the third time we saw a car in the water because we actually saw... Uh, couple of machines dipping in that first race. This was the pass where Katie Munnings tried to get up the inside of Christine GZ and unfortunately rolled the Andretti Alta Kielik machine onto its roof. She had to try, she was quicker, and it, it's about position, what points you get. 
Sorensen, though, taking the win on her debut with her teammate RJ Anderson. That's one championship point for them. And then it was immediately on to race two. Now, watch Fraser McConnell. He's in the dust at the minute. He's in the X44, remember, replacing Sebastian Loeb. He's P4. He finds traction on the outside. Watch this. Comes across. Boom. Whole shot into turn two in front of Tanner Fouts in the McLaren machine. It was just a... It was a masterful line. It really was brilliant. Yeah, it wasn't what we were expecting as well, because I think it, we'd always looked towards it was the, the left-hand position, uh, the P5 position, that actually we thought was the quickest, but it was a phenomenal start for him. Yeah, brilliant drive by McConnell. This was the one little moment where it got a bit sideways. He didn't lose too much time. He brought the car home a nice long way ahead, and, of course, handing over to a reigning champion, Christina Gutierrez. Uh, she was hopefully going to make things look easy on the, the second part. You can see some passing happen using the Anoa hyperdrive down that straight. Here, Emma Gilmore in the McLaren in the middle of his shot has to check up. Otherwise, she's just going to end up straight in the bushes. A little bit of contact on the outside then with RXR. So Gilmore really got mugged and unfortunately ran up the back then of the RXR up at waypoint 10. Luckily, the hood came off almost immediately. But at Q1, really, really was a pretty exciting start to the season. This is Gutierrez. She bought the X44 machine easily home for the win. Championship point for them as well. So one point each for Chip Ganassi Racing and X44. Fraser McConnell looked up for a hug with his brand yeah, new teammate. So that's the end of Q1, and that puts the drivers then into their positions for Q2. So the results from Q1, basically, if you're first, third, or fifth, you stay in your heat. If you're second or fourth, you swap heat. So the P2 and P4 drivers from heat one go through to heat two and vice versa. That means we don't see the same five cars racing the same five cars in each session, mixing it up nicely ahead of Q2, which is, of course, still to come. And we'll decide who gets that top qualifier spot. So, yeah, great stuff. Looking forward to seeing uh, how this unfolds. Two sessions of racing maybe doesn't suit the drivers who are used to rally and rally raid, but let's get qualifying two underway and we'll see who can get that top qualifier spot at round one of 2023. Attention all teams, this is Race Control. Stand by for the start of the Desert x -Pre. Qualifying round two, heat one is about to begin. Energize your systems and prepare to race. Here we go then, Q2. Same format as Q1, we've got two five car races. You get qualifying points for where you finish in these races. If you win the race, you get one championship point as well. If we have draws with the qualifying points at the end of the two sessions, the positions are decided by the fastest times in the Continental Traction Challenge. All the female drivers are starting in this one because of who the team's nominated for session number one. So let's take a look at how the drivers are going to be lining up ahead of this second qualifying session today here in the sun with the red seat just behind. What a stunning view that is. So Amanda Sorensen and Anderson are going to be on the left hand side. Molly Taylor, Kevin Hansen, P4. Then we've got Christine GZ, Michaela Allen Kataludski and Katie Mullins. Okay, drivers in cars and ready to go. Concentration, fully ready for the start. Molly Taylor taking a glance across. Now we've got just 15 seconds to go. Munnings has got to get a good result. They've managed to get that car back together after a DNF. They got zero points from Q1. What can they do in this one? RXR a long way down the order as well. Random gap to that green light and then away. It's all about trying to find the traction. Chip Ganassi Racing chose slot number one as we see contact in the middle of the grid. Christine GZ turns in on Molly Taylor. Molly Taylor gets around the outside of Amanda Sorensen. Sorensen gets contact from behind. Side by side now, Arlen Kotlinski uses her hyperdrive but runs straight into the back of the Chip Ganassi Racing machine. I think he was on the outside. No, it's the Carl Cox Motorsport machine. Those two cars with a pretty similar livery up and over the crest. Arlen Kotlinski's very sideways, nose high on the RXR machine. Carl Cox Motorsport dropping down into P3 at the back of the pack. 
it is Katie Mummies who hasn't used her hyperdrive. So the Anoa hyperdrive is a, is a four second boost of extra power. She is now going to need to use that later on to try and make a few positions up. Now, the other thing they could be banking on here is trying to nick those extra two championship points for the Continental Traction Challenge. It starts here at gate number three that they've just passed through and it includes the straight. So for my money, if you want to get the Continental Traction Challenge, you're going to need to use the Anoa hyperdrive on that straight. And it could be that Andretti uh, out of Keylet have, have already decided they need to try and go for those two championship points, Nikki. You know, they've had a rough start to the weekend. Yeah, it's been a tough one for them, that's for sure. Um, a great start there from Molly Taylor, the season one champion for RXR. Uh, and, you know, this is when it really, really counts. We've seen a great start from Amanda Sorensen. They managed to get 10 points in the first heat of qualifying. So they're going to be looking to uh, double up again in this session. Uh, but Molly Taylor really challenging Sorensen for that. Yeah, you're on board with Sorensen just there a moment ago. So she's dropped around three and a half seconds back. Taylor is no slouch, as we know. She's absolutely rapid. Arlen Kotlinski in P4. Munnings hasn't used that hyperdrive yet, so she's obviously hoping she can be a bit closer on the next lap if she's looking for a pass. I wonder if there's an issue with the car. I'm trying to see how far back they are. Um, obviously, Munnings had a, had a huge accident yeah. in the first session of the morning. Uh, managed to hit a bit of the camel grass, turn the car upside down. They've got the car back up on track ready, but of course there are only a couple of hours in between sessions. And, and the carriages are small. There's, you know, we're in these dusty, desert-like conditions. It's not easy for the teams uh, to get the cars back up and running on track. So perhaps there are some technical issues since that accident this morning. Trying to find the gaps on our timing screen, which unfortunately are missing right now. There we are, that's a look at them there. Plus 16.8, so she's four seconds off the back of the RXR machine. Sorensen absolutely sending it over the jump there. So Amanda is no stranger to big jumps as we know. And that is, is that contact the whole way down the straight? I think it might well be between uh, Arlen Kotlinski and, and Christine GZ. So GZ defending her position for Carl Cox Motorsport. She did that in the last race, of course. Here we go, Arlen Kotlinski this time getting up the inside line. She makes a pass there. Look at the bodywork left in that dip there. The crest dip, crest sequence has just seen bits of the cars flung off. So Arlen Kotlinski moves up to P3. RXR in the previous session were P9. So, no, that's the traction challenge. They, in the previous session, they, yeah, they were seventh overall on points. So remember, they score points for each of their finishing positions. And if they're equal on points, the split is done by the Continental Traction Challenge. So they've got to get good results. Got to be in the top five. Uh, it's interesting, to, isn't it, to see how the track is evolving as well. It looks like there's more dust in the air. It doesn't look like the sand is settling as quickly as it did in the first session this morning. I guess that's just due to, to the, you know, the fact that the sun's out. Uh, it's drying out that sand on the beach. So that could be an issue uh, in terms of visibility over the course of the day. Very much. There is uh, that. OK, Munnings now uses the Anoa hyperdrive. So the little chime that you hear and then she lights up blooming. She's using four seconds of 400 kilowatts, which is 550 odd horsepower. You're on board with Taylor. We'll be swapping over with uh, Kevin Hansen in a minute. Gap is up to 8.3 seconds. So Taylor really is hammered down. Now, this is the Molly Taylor that we saw for nearly all of season one. On to uh, off the beach section through the hairpins again. So we were hearing earlier on, uh, Amanda Sorensen was telling us uh, that it, it, going alongside the, the edge of the beach is, is, is you're looking for more traction and smoothness, which we'd seen. But we did see, Nikki, a couple of people just went a bit too close to the water. Yeah, they went for their early morning dunk, didn't they? Lia Sands earlier uh, really did go, uh, well, wheels in to the water this morning. Yeah, uh, and then She made an incredible recovery, though. I mean, they still finished second in their qualifying heat. I mean, they say that the electricity and water doesn't mix, but, we, you know, we've proved it was OK. We've driven two extreme E-machines into the sea three <laughs> times this morning. Uh, Nasser Alatir and Clara Anderson both ended up in the drink as well. They actually then got a big penalty, a 70-odd second penalty for speeding in a slow zone. So after Katie Munnings had her roll, because that Cooper was so far behind, they came into that section on the track flat out and they were given a 73 second, I think it was, penalty for coming to that area. And I was trying to figure out why they'd done it. But of course, having been in the sea twice, they were behind Munnings when she rolled. So they were the only car that passed through that slow zone. Into the switch zone now. Veloce coming in, here is another look at the start. 
So inside line, you've got Amanda Sorensen out in P2. Look at that, Christine Cheesy just comes straight across and hits Taylor. Taylor goes round the outside in the 90 right, gets a little nudge from Sorensen, who then gets a little nudge from GZ. At this point, I thought Arlen Kotlinski was going to get through, but she gets caught up behind and, and kind of gets her wheels hooked up. This is Arlen Kotlinski we're on board with now. So if she'd managed to move right, she'd have got away with it, but she ends up in the back of the car here twice, and that puts them in P4, so not ideal. Uh, plenty of contact at the start of this race. Oh, up, so, oh, Ooh, wow. That's, that's a big old hit. You don't want to land sideways either. Landing sideways is the quickest way to, to get yourself into a roll. So, okay, Veloce heading out, swapping over. This is now Kevin Hansen at the wheel. There is RJ Anderson. Anderson is going to take over from Sorensen. He'll be getting after it, trying to chase Kevin Hansen down. Johan Christofferson in P3 here, he'll be looking to move up. We're going to hear from Molly Taylor, who's brought the car home in P1. Molly, terrific start for you there. Just talk me through it. Uh, yeah, a little bit of contact um, with Christine on, on the start, and then um, I had a pretty good entry into the into the first corner, and I could see that I was I was ahead. So yeah, I just went for it, and um, yeah, it worked. And then just just maintaining after that. Yeah, then keep your head down. Let's see how Kevin gets on. Thank you. Well, there we are, Molly Taylor, uh, feeling very positive, as she should do after that session. Um, but what can his teammate, what can her teammate, RJ Anderson, do? Um, so, nine-second gap at the moment between Anderson and Kevin Hansen for Veloci Racing Esports. It's gone up as well, so it's just gone up, Nikki, by another second. So. Either Hansen is, is really pushing or Anderson is slightly struggling for pace. You can see Timmy Hansen at the back of the pack. He's got five seconds to make up on Scheider. Unfortunately, I think uh, Andretti uh, Altakila uh, almost certainly going to be in the redemption race, which is the second of the finals. You heard Kevin Hansen use his Inoa hyperdrive. Now, these drivers will be aiming here to get the fastest time they can down the straight and therefore get a quicker time in the Continental Traction Challenge with their counterpart the two times are added up for this sector and that's what puts them into their ranking other drivers not used it yet left hand side of your screen the little x's tell you that they've still got their hive drive to use they're going to save that for lap two so the question is will they be able to get close enough to drive in front to actually use that hyperdrive to make up a position well christopherson look has chased the gap down to 1.6 seconds is it was, look, he's now very, very close indeed. He's got to get just within striking distance. He won't know that Anderson has still got hyperdrive. Anderson gets sideways off the crest. That's going to cost a little bit of time. Johan will have seen that now coming onto this straight section. Going to come back in for another couple of hairpins. I think Johan will wait until lap two. We haven't seen another straight really, Nicky, have we, that they can ex it, it really exploit that four second of Inoa hyperdrive. No, exactly. And as you say, it's all part of the continental uh, traction tire traction that they need to use it at that point yeah if they want those extra points and they need to just use it on the straight you're looking at the Carl Cox motorsport machine they are a minute and 11 back according to our timing screen okay now Christopherson uses the hyperdrive trying to find a way past Anderson in front he has found somewhere else he wants to use it in the middle of the track Christopherson passes RJ Anderson but bear in mind, Anderson still has his Inoa hyperdrive and I think will almost certainly deploy that on the front straight coming down the beach to try and get past. But Christofferson there exploring the limits again. He made some, oh, we've seen Johan make some incredible moves over the years, but that was a great pass. Anderson now will be right behind in through this crest dip section where you're just hanging onto the car. So watch for Anderson on the beach straight. Coming up in just a couple of turns as Johan is really flirting with it. Gets the car up on two wheels. This is when experience really counts, doesn't it? You can see these guys fighting uh, against the machine, against the sand, against the conditions, um, and yet still managing to keep control of it all. Anderson took the alternate line there, Nicky, and I don't think it was the right call. He wasn't close enough to make use of it, and that maybe has given Johan enough breathing space coming onto the straight. I'm expecting the P2 car to use its Inoa hyperdrive coming onto the straight, so watch for Anderson and Sorensen lighting up blue, trying to chase down that gap. It's a long way back, it's possibly too late. Got to use it at some point. But I'm really surprised about that, really, really surprised. Not close enough to make the pass. Maybe he thinks I'll try and make it up in the next few corners and use it where Johan used it. Timmy Hansen uses it, look, he's coming onto the straight now. So it looks like they've made up a position, but yeah. 
some tricky, tricky conditions out there. Oh, I'm, I'm gutted for Munnings and Hansen with a P4 in this race. It, it's not going to be enough, Nicky. They're going to be in the redemption race. Two finals this year, the redemption race and the grand final. And uh, no chance to move up from one to the other. Yeah, really disappointing start to the season. And, you know, I know Katie is going to carry that responsibility on her shoulders. And is that someone out? Yeah, we've got a slow zone. So we've got a slow zone here at waypoint 13, which is because the Carl Cox Motorsport machine has come to a halt. So you can see there, plus a lap at the bottom of your screen. That means the drivers go through these two waypoints at 30 kilometers an hour. Can I just point out, you can hear the, the sea in the background there, which How is relaxing. cool. Yeah, it's lovely, yeah. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> and enjoy the scenery. So, uh, Timo Schneider there. Yeah, uh, Schneider's out with, with GZ. That probably means they're going to be in the redemption race as well. So we've, we've got, because remember, a DNF is zero points. So we've got two teams there which are highly likely. Schneider and GZ were P5 in, in the first qualifying session. Kevin Hansen takes the finish line for Veloce. So that's a championship point for them and another good result. That's sure. I reckon that'll see them through to the to the grand final. Rosberg X Racing P2 for Christofferson. That's a decent result for them as well. With retirements for two teams, there is a chance they're going to make it through. We've got to wait and see what the results are in race two of Q2. Over the line, Hansen. Timmy Hansen, that is. You're looking at Kevin Hansen winning that encounter with Molly Taylor. Brilliant start by Taylor and no looking back from there, Nikki. They, they smashed it there. What a way to start the season. Uh, a real boost of confidence for them and the team, which is just what you need at this point at the start of the season. Full chill for Kevin. Not full chill for Carl Cox Motorsport. That squad with some work to do. The, the car doesn't look that badly damaged. There must be something tech inside it. So there'll be a bit of work for them to do. They've got a few hours before the redemption race, so which I think they I think they'll end up in, unfortunately, even with a P5 from Q1, a zero points is, is gonna drop you a long way down the order. So a busy afternoon ahead for the Carl Cox motorsport team. Indeed, cars returning to the paddock. They'll get fettled and ready to head out later on. And we're going to have a quick chat with Michaela Arlen-Kotlinski. Now, there's Johan, fist pump from Johan for RXR. We're going to have a catch up with Michaela, who is in the Vodafone Command Centre. Uh, Michaela Arlen-Kotlinski. Can you hear me, Michaela? Can you my ear. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hello. Now I can. Yes. Now I can. <laughs> Michaela, that's, that's more like it. So kind of a... It, it was an OK Q1, wasn't it? But you guys were caught in traffic. That's a bit more like it. We've just seen Johan pumping his fist in the car. How are you guys feeling? Yeah, much better. I mean, Q1 was difficult with the luxury of the starting grid, uh, which, you know, puts us in a tough situation then also for Q2. But we tried our best. Uh, it was a bit rough in the start. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think we both did a good job. Uh, let's see where that takes us. Do you think you're going to make it through to the grand final? Do you think that result is enough? I mean, obviously, we've got to wait on the results of the next race, but it, you know, Johan's looking well pleased in the car right now. We're looking at pictures of him climbing out with a big mm -hmm. smile on his face. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Let's see what the Q2 says. But in the end, I think we felt much better now in Q2 compared to Q1. So let's see. Take it from there. All right. Wishing you luck for the rest of the day. Go and get after it. Yeah, thank you. Always good to hear from Michaela. Uh, seeming quite positive. Yeah, very. I just had to try and push one in the traction challenge. So let's take a look at a recap of the results from qualifying two heat one results. So it was a DNF there for GZ and Schneider. Then it was Munnings and Hansen. Unfortunately, a fourth was the best they could do in this session. So it looks like they'll be in the, the redemption race. Sorensen and Anderson, 14 seconds down, gives them a third place position. And then we've got Anlin Kotodinski and Christofferson in second, and Taylor and Hansen wrapping it up in a very tidy P1. So one of the top drivers in this championship this year is, of course, Matthias Ekstrom. Brings incredible P1 
pedigree to the table. Double DTM champion, 2016 World Rally Cross champion. What makes him so good? Oh, he's just a weapon, a multi-surface weapon. He's probably one of the greatest modern day all-rounders. But we've had some fantastic drivers in this series in the previous two seasons as well. If you've never seen any of that, here's a little recap. Two years ago, a new kind of racing was born. Welcome to the Santa Elena. Welcome to the biggest adventure of our time. A revolution in speed and sustainability. Wouldn't it be great to be a part of something that really does make a difference? A showcase of technology and innovation. Extreme E. No lifting, all oh, heat charge! Joel, look at that! <laughs> an all-electric off-road racing series traveling to the most remote corners of the planet to highlight the effects of climate change. In season one and two, the series visited seven different locations around the world, starting in Alula, Saudi Arabia. Chris Thompson goes out wide, now he's gonna make the cut back and try and carry the speed through the corner. He kicks the car really high. The race was won by Rosberg X Racing, a team led by 2016 Formula One world champion, Nico Rosberg. The championship in season one went down to the wire as RXR battled Lewis Hamilton's team X44 throughout. After four dramatic rounds, it came down to the final race of the season. Three laps to decide our champion. Incredibly, Rosberg X Racing took the title by the tightest of margins, with a tie break having finished the season on the same championship points as X44. As season two got underway, RXR continued their winning ways, dominating at the opening Desert X Prix. Johan Christoph, the reigning champion, crosses the line to take the win in round one. Round three in Sardinia saw Johan's new teammate for season two also delivering the goods. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski at the wheel, past you to Klein Smith, just into the water splash, and RXR take the win in round three. But in round four in Chile, X44 were determined to fight back. And wow, X44 muscle their way through. Look at them go almost over at the same time. They took their first win of the season to leave them within touching distance of the title as we headed to the final round in Uruguay. And look at those two title rivals going together all the way. It's RXR versus X44. Sebastian Loeb fires up the inside. X44 have won this championship. A title each for Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton's teams in the first two seasons. Can one of them make it two, or will there be a new name in the Extreme E history books as a new championship fight gets underway? Well, there are 10 teams and 20 drivers in Extreme E, but we also have a team of scientists on the ground as well. I'm joined by one of them now. Professor Carlos Duarte joins me here, uh, marine ecologist and chair of the Extreme E Scientific Committee. Tell me, what on earth does the Scientific Committee do over the last three seasons of Extreme E? So Extreme E is the first sport to have a scientific committee, and our role is to guide the climate action program of Extreme E that is called the Legacy Program. But we also work with all of the Extreme E partners to raise awareness on climate action and climate science and solutions for our climate crisis. We say we're racing with a purpose through Extreme E. So we not only come and provide brilliant sporting action, but also hope to leave a lasting, positive environmental impact, a legacy wherever we go as well. Tell us more about those projects. Yeah, so the scientific committee contains a range of uh, skills and expertise from climate, from polar science, for uh, marine ecology, and also deserts. And then we design projects that repair the environments where we uh, race and that are impacted by climate change. So those uh, projects are running continuously since season one, and they spread all across the planet. For instance, raising awareness on climate change in Greenland with children, planting trees in uh, Saudi Arabia, in Senegal, and also in the Amazonia, and also uh, saving uh, turtles in the Red Sea, as well as other projects to rewild environments like in the UK and also Saudi Arabia. Yeah, because Saudi Arabia is your playground. This is your yes. area. Yeah. Tell us about the, sp the specific programs that you have here. Yeah, so this is the third season we race in Saudi Arabia. In fact, the Extreme E inaugural race was in Saudi Arabia. And in the first season, we introduced a project uh, to um, uh, mitigate the impact of sea level rise on sea turtles in the Red Sea because their nests are really now uh, flooded by rising seas. So we have a program that's been ongoing for three years to uh, relocate nests at uh, risk and also raise awareness on the risk of sea turtles 
Uh, we also introduced a project of uh, forestation in La Lula. There's a community, community led project and it's based on planting fruit trees, so there's benefits for the environment, the community, and in Neon, already we are in the ses second year of our rewilding uh, project where we are uh, repairing the ecosystem and bringing back the large animals that maintain the ecosystem healthy. A huge amount of work ongoing, Indeed. well done to you. Yeah, so it's going around the clock. Whether stream is racing or not, those projects continue, continue and are a legacy for the environment and the people. Brilliant stuff, you're making a huge difference. Thank We're you, Carlos. All, yeah, thank you. systems and prepare to race. So there we have it. The anticipation is building ahead of our final qualifying race. Carlos Sainz, they're not racing today, but looking on supporting his team, uh, wondering who is going to be going through to the grand final and securing those points in this quali race and who will be going through to the redemption race. It looks like Carl Cox, unfortunately, uh, hasn't achieved enough points to go through. Let's take a look. One minute. One minute. Let's take a look at the grid as the drivers line up. So first up, we've got uh, X44 is lining up on the left-hand side. Christina Gutierrez. Ah, so there we have it. Right, so this makes it a bit e easier. So we've got Lia Sainz in P5 on the left-hand side. Christina Gutierrez alongside. Then we've got Hedda Hossa, uh, the Norwegian driver, Clara Anderson, and finally, Emma Gilmore for the Neon McLaren team. Here we go then. Final qualifying race of round one of Extreme E. 2023 about to get underway. Absolutely crucial for some of these teams that they get a good result. Who's going to get a decent start? And we've seen how important turn one and turn two are. On board there with Gutierrez as she lets the handbrake go and lets rip off the line. Slots in behind Lyas Sands. Lyas Sands has got an incredible start. Backs the Axiona Science Machine into turn one. She's about three car lengths ahead already. Emma Gilmore runs the car out really wide, looking for the space. Head of Hossax uses her hyperdrive. You know, hyperdrive already. And Gutierrez responds in P3. Gutierrez looking up the inside line ahead of Hossax. Can she make that stick? Axiona Science, she has. Axiona Science lead in the background. They're side by side. Hossax and Gutierrez moves up into P2. So Gutierrez and McConnell looking for a top qualifier spot here in the last race. Chicken Axie racing, I think, were P2, if I remember correctly. So they're on 18 points. So X44 need a similar score as you see Hossas and Emma Gilmore side by side in the background now. Gilmore goes left at the split here. Hossas going to take the right line. That will give Hossas a slightly better entry into this one. But I think Gilmore is far enough forward. So, OK. Back of the pack, Clara Anderson, P5, she's got to make some moves. They ended up in the drink twice in Q1, and in the drink, I mean in the sea here, in the shot, the Red Sea, they ended up hooking a wheel and ended up nosing at the minute. Sands leads for Axiona Science. Gutierrez is in P2 for X44. On board with Anderson there, running down the side of the beach. She hasn't used her hyperdrive yet. Gilmore's got her left, hers left as well. Now away from the beach and back into the sandy section. So will Gutierrez risk a pass here on Lyre Sands? If X44 comes home in P1, Nikki, they will be the top qualifiers because they'll have outscored the Hummer EV Chip Ganassi racing squad. If they come home in P2, it will come down to who is faster in this section of the track. Over the crest, they can see the Continental Traction Challenge. That's where that ends, and it starts way back at waypoint three. So all to play for, as you see Hozas, the rear end of that car kicking up so high. So much to play for at the moment. And what's really interesting is who is going to still be playing for uh, the 
Continental Traction Challenge and who is still thinks they're in the running for the grand final. I mean, Carl Cox's team, they only got six points in that first qualifying run. Uh, so ultimately, it looks like they're yeah, going to be struggling to get through. Yeah, they won't make it. And unfortunately, Andretti, Alta Kielit are not going to make it either. So we know those two teams are in the de redemption races. Five slots in the uh, the grand final, five slots in the redemption race. Look at that, it's like a target, isn't it, on the back of Laia Sanz's car. That's what Gutierrez is seeing. The visibility is not too bad. Flying over that crest jump now, you see the rear end of the X44 machine bounce up high. They lost the rear part of the bodywork there, maybe, I think. Yes, they've lost the rear left. Caught to Gutierrez, is sideways over the crest. Laia Sanz just edges a few car lengths in front. Emma Gilmore there doing a sterling job, just seven seconds behind Gutierrez. Uh, this is where she nearly really needs to make up a little bit of time to be able to secure herself and her teammate a position in the grand final. Uh, you really want to start off the season uh, in the best possible footing to build up your confidence as we head into uh, the 10, 10 rounds that we've got this season. Of course, every race is a double header now, every race weekend with the new format. So watch out here for Clara Anderson in P5 in the Apt Cooper machine. You can see her in the background. She's trying to find a way past Hozas. She made some great passes last year, but key here is Clara still has the Inoa hyperdrive. Now, I really think that she'll use it on the straight. I said it in the last race and, and it didn't happen, but I think Anderson will use it on the straight here to try and get past. That's the battle for P4 and P5. There's Gilmore. So Gilmore using the hyperdrive and Anderson does. So that's the battle for P5. And P4, I wonder if Anderson's getting past. There it is, Anderson coming up the inside. So just that extra bit of power. And that's what we're talking about. This is somewhere we saw Johan deploy it on the straight that's in the middle of the track. This is down the beach. Anderson getting up past Hosas using the Inoa hyperdrive. Nicely done. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant move there. We've seen some phenomenal driving from Clara Anderson. Uh, I think it was Peter and her debut performance in XE and then a P1 in her last race of 2022. So she's going to hopefully build on that momentum and continue that uh, performance into season three. So at the minute, as it stands, we think Apt Cooper might be doing enough to get through here. And I think that move, yeah, that move should give them an extra couple of points. No, not enough, sorry, not enough where they are. They're going to be out at the minute. RXR are just scraping in. We're, we're looking at a live, we've got a live screen in front of us, which gives us an idea of the points. Actiona Sainz, Lyasen's going to come in and pass over to Ekstrom. Extra McConnell, Faust, coming, jumping into the cars next. Kovalainen and, and Alatir as well. Oh, Lyra Sands, listen to the transmission chat as she comes in 30 kilometers an hour. Get those wheels locked up as late as possible. Absolutely critical to make sure they do stay below the 30 kilometers per hour. We've seen penalties given away just for silly mistakes at this point in the game, uh, and it's just not worth it. You know, it was the X44 guys saying that they were so pleased with the McConnell Gutierrez switch earlier on in the day. Uh, they put a lot of time into the practice and having that smooth switch um, is actually a lot harder than it looks. So gaps on the way into the switch zone, two seconds between Actiona Science and X44. Then it was a further 10 seconds back to Neil McLaren, 14 and 16. So uh, yeah, it, it, there's about six seconds between P3 and P5 according to our timing screen. Out the front, though, it's going to be very close indeed. Top left of your screen, Fraser McConnell jumping into the X44 machine. Top right, Matthias Ekstrom jumping into the Actiona Science because Carlos Science is still injured. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for this. <laughs> yeah, see them all getting uh, strapped in, belted up. Uh, plenty of time. Uh, well, I say plenty of time. There's 45 seconds to get the job done. Um, and, uh, yeah, make sure they lead the switch zone safely. You can hear the squad there saying, couldn't you, well done to, uh, to Laia Sands as she came in at that moment the end. So they're, they're, uh, they're away. There goes Ekstrom and Fraser McConnell right in behind. So McConnell for X44. If he wins this race with Gutierrez, they will be the top qualifiers. If they finish P2, it's going to come down to the Continental Traction Challenge. Let's have a chat with Laia Sands, who bought that science machine home in P1. Laia, muy bien is the call from the team right there. What a start that was. And you've, you've put Matthias in the best possible position. Yeah, uh, hopefully we can finish like that because then we go straight to the, the final. It's what we want. We want to, to fight for, for victories or podiums. So 
I'm happy. Uh, the start, uh, for sure, is the worst moment here. In this track, it's really important because you cannot overtake, so uh, good job. Good job indeed. Thank Head you. to the command centre. Good luck. Thank you. So how close is uh, Fraser McConnell, Matthias Ekstrom? We saw Ekstrom in that amazing encounter with Anderson, didn't we? In uh, RJ Anderson, that is. We've got two Andersons this year. We're going to have to watch out for that. RJ Anderson for Chip Ganassi Racing. And, uh, oh, just looking at the gap now. Uh, Clara Anderson, sorry, just looking at gaps as well. Clara Anderson in for Apt Cooper. There's a two S's for Anderson, Clara, and one S for RJ Anderson. Unfortunately, well, that, doesn't, that doesn't help with commentary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we're only listening to you, have got no idea. <laughs> but yeah, Ekstrom had that incredible fight. He was up so close. Anderson, RJ Anderson paid him a real compliment, said he raced, he's such a pro, he raced me so clean. And the pressure was piled on through the entire encounter. But he never did any, yeah, never gave him a nudge, never did anything underhand. Fraser's going to try and get close. It's 2.8 seconds at the minute. I'll say, if it comes down to the traction challenge at the minute, or certainly as it stood after the previous session, Nikki, the fastest team in the Continental Traction Challenge was X44. So they would take the top qualifier on countback. Oh, but actually, Oda Science have got it now. So, but X44 is still ahead of GMC, Hummer EV, Chip Ganassi Racing. So at the minute, top qualifier will go to X44. Okay, brilliant. And obviously, you get an extra point for qualifying in each race at the top. Uh, so all uh, good news for extra points there. Um, interesting what Faust can do for Neon McLaren. So at the moment, they would be out. They would be going into the redemption race. And there's obviously a relatively big gap at the moment, 14 second gap between Faust and McConnell. Uh, it's going to be difficult for him to make up that amount of time, but uh, still plenty of action could happen in the final lap. Okay, we, we, I think if we can see the Continental Traction Challenge again, if science comes in here, I think they're going to be equal on points and they might nick the top qualifier, Nikki. Uh, they are, they're top, they're top here. So actually, owner science have gone top in the Traction Challenge. I was looking at X44 versus Chip Ganassi Racing. But if, Sci if uh, Extra can bring the science machine home in P1, they should get 18 points from qualifying. Frantically looking down through our results. Yeah, to try well they came, and, uh, they came second in, uh, in, the, in the first heat, in the first qualifying heat, with eight points. So, yeah, absolutely. Ten points to them if they can bring it home in P1. So, I wonder when they've stolen it, which laps they've got it on, because I say coming into the session, it was uh, it was X44, McConnell and Gutierrez. Uh, it's, uh, okay, looking up, it's Ekstrom. So, the sector times, Ekstrom's gone quickest in sector one, two, and three. So, Ekstrom in sector two going quickest means he has stolen the Continental Traction Challenge. Of course, Laia Sands has got to do it as well because it's an accumulation of both of the, the drivers' times. But Sands has been absolutely flying. McConnell, look, switching on as he's Noah Hyperdrive, but he's too far back now. Actually, Onus Science is going to get the top qualifier spot. Well, this is really exciting stuff because, you know, Achiona signs to be able to challenge X44 um, and also the Veloce team as well uh, is going to make this a very exciting competition. But the question is, how much can we read into the qualifying results at this point? Well, I, I just think we can see it's going to be very, very close come the grand final. You know, the, the field is stacked. We've had some unlucky drives here this weekend already. Uh, bear in mind, this is a double header, so we're going to go racing again tomorrow. Um, it, it is, it's going to be... They're going to see some epic battles in both finals. I'm only sorry they can't go up from the redemption race to the main final, because that would really be some redemption, wouldn't it? But on board with Extra. Looks pretty chilled, doesn't he? He's just picked up his fourth race of champions win recently. He's on the final lap of qualifying, coming through that section, which is called the run-in over the big crest. Going to come down just a couple of corners to go. And if our uh, live maths is right, and, you know, it's notoriously not always, uh, but if our live maths is right, Ekstrom here with his teammate Lyre Sands will have done enough to top the Continental Traction Challenge, which means although there are going to be three teams finishing on very similar points, they should have enough to beat the top qualifiers. Well, Carlos signs there. I'm sure breathing a sigh of relief, or is it too early to do that? Well, let's go down to the command centre and... Hear how Carlos Sainz is feeling after that phenomenal qualifying. Carlos, how are you doing? Yeah, of course, very, yeah, very happy for sure. You know, it's been really good uh, two qualities, 
especially the second one and yeah, very good, very happy for the team. Now obviously we need to concentrate in the final which I'm sure is going to be very difficult but uh, so far so good, uh, well done to, to the whole team. C congratulations, how is it feeling not being in the race car? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a different feeling. Uh, of course, you know, the, the adrenaline is a little bit different. Also, for me, it's the first time outside and somehow you suffer a lot because you are not under control. You, you, you look from different perspective, but, uh, you know, it's also nice to see when the whole team is doing a good job. So well done to Laia, well done to Matthias and all the mechanics so far. Good job. We will see now in the final. Well, enjoy uh, the time from a different perspective. Thanks very Thank much, Carl. Well done. Thank you. Here's the result then of Q2 race two, our final race of the qualifying portion of this round one. Yeah. Double header this weekend, remember. JBXC with P5, it's Apt Cooper in P4, Neon McLaren Extreme e in P3, X44 Vita Carbon Racing gets second place, but with first place, it's Matthias Ekstrom and Laia Sands, also with the Continental Traction Challenge, which we think will be enough to put them in as the top qualifiers. So confirmation of the results at the end of qualifying. You can see there with the win, Aciona Sainz on the right-hand side, taking that top qualifier spot. That's how they line up the different drivers. Remember, of course, uh, it's grid play that will decide on those grid positions. But that is your grand final and your redemption race. One of the teams which have been involved in Extreme since the very first race is Veloce Racing. Developed as an esports company, this racing team is the first of its kind in the industry. Veloce started back end of 2017, beginning of 2018. Formula One had just gone under a change of ownership, renewed focus on digital audiences and a younger demographic. And we saw a Formula One esports event, all these young drivers taking part from all around the world, qualified through the internet. And we looked at who signed them, who had the rights to them, who was representing these drivers, and the answer was nobody. So we got underway with signing all of these talent. And it was a great business, but we couldn't scale it. Fast forward to who and what we are now. Extreme E first came onto our radar actually through being involved in the sport. Uh, Jean-Eric Verne is, is a good, good mate of mine. We were teammates in Formula 3. We actually were flatmates for a while and he's a shareholder in the business. We were sat in Monza together with Dan at the Formula 1 Grand Prix and I think that week Extreme E had been announced. We loved the project. We loved what it stood for, all of its core values. I mean, it's planet Earth meets America's Cup meets. I mean, it's nothing like this has ever been done before. So we were like, We've got to do this, we've got to find a way to do it, and we did. It was straight away something that I wanted to be a part of. Very quickly I realised that I could not be a driver because that's a different set of skills that I don't have. To have something also in the real world of sports was important for Veloce, and what better championship than Extreme me? So it came pretty naturally to form the team together. Our ambition is always to have real-life racing teams and real-life sporting assets. We are a sports and media organisation. Felt like a perfect fit Extreme E for us, you know, from the beginning, uh, everything the series stands for, we stand for as an organisation, quality in sport, men and women together, equal amount of running, equally as important to the end result in the race, which was great, it made a lot of sense to come on board. So Veloce Racing operates and was built really a little bit unconventionally from a racing team perspective. We were and still are an esports and gaming business, so to build out our racing side, we had to really invest in that expertise and having Kevin and Molly, we've really sort of slowly taken steps to move in the right direction to help us really spearhead our charge. Veloce is a fantastic company and it's so, you know, different to any other motorsport team that I worked with in the past. This company has really pioneered in motorsport. Coming from the esport background, I think, you know, you can get a lot of knowledge on how to manage a race team and what you need to do to perform because the esport world is so competitive and there's, you know, anyone can do it. We're very much looking forward to season three of Extreme. We're going to continue to evolve, we're going to continue to disrupt, and I think that will be more evident than ever. We want to be that future-facing sports and media entertainment organisation. We want to be influenced by our fans and integrate the community into all and everything that we do and give them as much control as we can. And I think no other sports or media organisation in the world has that ambition. We're certainly not done yet. We are really at the beginning and um, we've got a, got a long way to go.
Well, getting ourselves ready for the last two races, uh, not of the weekend, of the day, because of course, it's double header time this season. Five locations, 10 races, twice as many points up for grabs. Cannot wait to see who can come out on top. At the very first round of the season, Neom in Saudi Arabia, round one, the redemption race and the grand final coming up. We're in Neom, an absolutely stunning track that lines the coast of the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia. It kicks off the first race weekend here of season three in Extreme E. Look at that stunning black backdrop. We've had plenty of action so far and so much more to come. My name is Nikki Shields and alongside me in the commentary box is Andrew Coley. Yeah, thank you, Nikki. Great to have you here. We want to give a shout out and send some love to Jenny Gow, who, of course, was the co-commentator with me for the whole of the first two seasons. And Jenny's uh, had a pretty rough winter. We know you're working super hard on your recovery, Jenny, and she's going to be back in the commentary box. But thank you to Nikki Shields for, for keeping the seat warm. Nikki, how's your first experience of Extreme E been as we see some shots of the people that have made it through to the grand final? Well, as you say, we are missing Jenny, uh, but it has been a, a bit of a treat to keep Jenny's seat warm. What a phenomenal series this is to be part of. I mean, the action has been non-stop the qualifying races absolutely superb proper wheel to wheel action i mean look at that uh, flying high we've had cars upside down we've been going <laughs> alongside the red sea we've been in the water three I never cars thought yeah <laughs> I never well, one car went in twice on that. yeah we've had we've had cars in the red sea as we say we really weren't expecting that the drivers were flirting a bit with the traction <laughs> that's along the edge of the shoreline uh, but yeah, McConnell's incredible move in turn one, a bit of a fight back for RX. Oh, look at that up on two wheels, the roll for Katie Munnings. If you've missed any of it, you need to go and have a, a little look back. But yeah, some absolutely brilliant action. Round one of 10, round one of two this weekend. So this is where we were at the end of qualifying. Three teams on 18 points at the top after Q1 and Q2. So that tie break is decided by the Continental Traction Challenge. It actually meant that it was Ekstrom and Lyre Sands who were the top qualifiers. What you'll see in there are the grid positions following on from grid play, which happened earlier on. Now, as well as, of course, all the on-track action, there's plenty going on behind the scenes around the environment and the legacy focus with Extreme E. And in Neom, we're going to be looking at the effects of desertification and expl exploration of programs to rewild and increase biodiversity in the region. And I think some of the drivers have been helping release some ostriches, lizards and gazelles um, over the course of the last few days, which has been pretty amazing. Let's take a look at what else XE gets up to in the environment. So for over a century, we have been using uh, fossil fuels as a convenient uh, carrier of energy to trade energy in the world. And yet we have now realized this came with a big uh, risk, which is climate change. So in the quest for a new source of energy, we are obviously converging in renewable sources like wind and sun. But the problem with those renewable uh, sources of energy is that uh, they can be input directly on the grid, but we need to trade it. So how to trade the sun and the wind where to places where wind and sun are not abundant. So the solution to that is hydrogen. And hydrogen is actually a solution to that because it's the way nature works. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and mainly exists on Earth in water. To extract it, we need to split molecules. To do this, you can use electrolysis powered by clean electricity. Next, you can mix the hydrogen with oxygen in a fuel cell, which comes into contact with a catalyst and produces electrons which can be stored in a battery for later and clean water. Hydrogen basically can replace all of the uses that we have now in place, even in industry, for fossil fuels. Hydrogen can power industry, vehicles, domestic power supply, and even space exploration. For the last two seasons, the Extreme paddock has been powered by hydrogen. For the first race of season three, Inoa has developed a new and innovative fuel cell system to power the entirety of the event in Neon. Behind us is a massive one megawatt fuel cell system, which is gonna power the whole race. And it will leave no trace, no carbon. The only thing it leaves is clean electricity and clean water. What we are demonstrating here is that 
a conversion from fossil energy to renewable and clean energy is possible. Right now, the revolution of hydrogen and the excitement about that revolution sits in industrial settings, it sits on laboratories, but it's not widely shared with the public. So I'm really excited of the opportunity to, through Extreme, to share the excitement of the hydrogen revolution with the funds and the public. And that's truly important because to win this battle and the race against climate change, we really need to embrace and adopt the hydrogen revolution. A brand new sporting format for this season means we have a new race of sorts, the redemption race. Tanner Faust of Neon McLaren, you find yourselves in there. Talk me through what happened today, what perhaps went wrong out there. Yeah, you just have two times on the track um, for qualifying in the heat of battle. And we, uh, with so little time on the track, we had to make some big setup changes. We went a bit the wrong way and um, in the morning, a bit too far, I'd say and then corrected for that in the afternoon session. So our pace in the morning was just down, even just straightaway speed. Um, but in the afternoon, things look good and we're optimistic for this race, but too little too late, you know? And if you, if you don't finish well in either one of the qualifying rounds, then it's really difficult to make up. So it does emphasize uh, consistency and moving forward, that's what we'll be focusing on. It's the redemption race, so still points on offer and learnings to be had. Thank you, Tanner. Yep. Best of luck to you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Well, let's head in to see JBXC, of course, Heike Kovalainen, uh, and indeed Hedda Hossas, two drivers for this team, also find themselves in the redemption race. Uh, interesting bit of kit here, actually. Hydrogen power, that is turned into electricity here. As I've said, the only waste product of that hydrogen is water. This, from Enel, really impressive stuff. This is what is charging the cars the Extremely Electrification Partner. Just gonna move my way around the car and I'm gonna bring Hedda to me over here. Squeeze through. Hedda, the redemption race. There are still points to be won and learnings to be had ahead of tomorrow, of course. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. We did some setups on the car earlier in Q2. We didn't really find the flow, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do some more setups on the car and uh, hopefully it'll be a better in the final. What sort of changes are you making to the car? So the suspension, we got uh, some big kicks that we didn't like, obviously. So, yeah, we'll try to fix that and hopefully it'll be a better flow. And, of course, we know how important the start is. What do you think is possible in this race? Yeah, we have seen the start is really important. So we just have to push and be, be quick and get in front and keep on the good speed and hopefully win the final. Well, thank you very much. Best of luck for that redemption race. Yeah, not long before the redemption race gets underway and one of the drivers looking to impress is rookie driver Heike Kovalainen. Um, he's obviously got a huge amount of experience uh, when it comes to Formula One, Super GTs, uh, but this is really his first proper experience going off-road. So this is going to be his opportunity to showcase um, his race craft. Can he pull it across from the other disciplines and use it here in Extreme E? Because JBXC, they're going to be looking to maximize the eight points that are available in this redemption race. Attention all teams, this is race control. Stand by for the start of the Desert X Prix. The redemption race is about to begin. Energize your systems and prepare to race. Wow, all smiles. I don't know what, I don't know what joke they're sharing in the, uh, the Vodafone <laughs> business Mark center. Schneider there, hello, center. Mark. Sorry, yeah, Share I, the I, joke. Don't, I don't <laughs> think they're... Uh, it, it won't be quite so funny when they get down to turn one, let's put it that way. But I do like the fact they're all in there together. Great to see that atmosphere. We hope you guys at home are enjoying this. This is our first finals of the year. There's one of the safety cars waiting to pick someone up. Uh, hopefully not Katie Money. She's had a ride in that already today. Some of the fantastic wildlife that we're looking to protect here. And uh, yeah, we're about to go. We're about to go. I'm 
absolutely pumped. It cannot wait to see how these cars are going to do. So on the left-hand side, we've got Tanner Faust in for McLaren XE. Abd Cooper XE has got NASA Alataya back in the driving seat. Then we have in the middle for JB XE, Jensen Button's team, Heike Kovalainen, and rookie driver, looking to impress today. And a brand new team, Carl Cox Motorsport, looking for a bit of redemption here to try and score some first points of the season with Timo Scheider. And finally, right on the right-hand side, we have Timmy Hansen back again for Andretti Altakiet. OK, then, eyes on those lights. It's a random gap between when the green comes on so none of the drivers can predict it away. Look at that reaction time, almost equal across the whole grid, moving backwards for Carl Cox Motorsport. Sideways contact there. Alatea into Tanner Faust. Tanner Faust has the inside line of the whole shot. Kevin Hansen, look, oh, sorry, uh, Kovalainen. Hansen was in that car last year, has moved to the inside line. He's trying the Fraser McConnell move. Can he pull it off on Faust as well? McConnell went round the outside of Faust in one of the qualifying sections. Only can't roll in the background. That's the Andretti machine. has gone over again. Timmy Hansen this time has dipped off in the inside of turn two. The car's upside down. Faust leads. Alatea slots in behind. Haken Kovalainen in P3. Sand flying up in the background. Where's Timo Scheider? There he is. Now, did the Andretti out to Kiel machine land on its wheels or its roof? I reckon it's on its roof. But at the minute, it is Tanner Faust leading for Neon McLaren XE and Alatea in P2. Wow, I mean, so much action there to unpick from the start of that race. But clearly, Tanner Faust had the advantage in the P1 position on the left-hand side, managed to get a nice, clean start away from the rest of the pack. They're up the right way, but they're going no further. Frustration on Hansen's face. Look at that, he's gutted. That is just a shocking start for the weekend. Munnings isn't even going to get a look in. They're going to have to write this one off, Nicky, and just go again tomorrow. Devastating. Absolutely devastating for the Andretti Altaquila team. But look up ahead. So we've got Neil McLaren up against Abt Cooper. Going Alatea's ahead. gone over. Sorry, Nicky. Alatea's gone over the front ah. of the McLaren in the exact same place as Katie Mullings tried to pass. Tanner Faust has had to miss that flag. Heike Kovalainen's missed it as well. In theory, that's a 10-second penalty each. But if he's been forced off the track by a shunt, I think the stewards might look on that favourably. So absolutely. Absolute carnage. There's Alatea on his side, right? Just looking super chilled for a man who's unfortunately had the exact same crash that Munnings had this morning, only hasn't quite gone over. Unbelievable. Once again, that camel grass just getting in the way, causing issues, uh, getting the cars to turn over. I mean, so much action again before the start of even one lap completed. Uh, but good to see that wow. Nassar is OK. Uh, but the race does continue. It does indeed. So Heike Kovalainen out front. Now remember, they might put some slow zones in. I'm suspecting two slow zones on, on the next three laps, which will mean that the drivers will go in slow in those sections. They may red flag the race when we get into the switch zone. But they've got a whole nother lap to go. I'm kind of thinking if we're going to do a lap under safety conditions, you know, putting a, sl a go slow in those zones, we might as well finish the race. So let, let's see. It depends a bit where the cars are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who would have thought the first race would end up is basically just a, a double header at the moment. Um, between Kovalainen and, and Faust. I mean, this is going to be a fantastic battle on, our, on their hands. Yeah, it is. Look up ahead. Let's see where Timmy Hansen is. They're coming up towards that moment. Faust getting sideways, looking for the inside line. Can't find a way through here. There's a little jump crest. He's right in behind Kovalainen. Look in the background. You can see all the signage has been destroyed as well. So Hansen's off the road somewhere. It looks like turn two is clear, Nicky, so no need to red flag for that. We have got a, the, the screen is showing a yellow, and I think that will just be a go slow, as I say, in that one section where uh, Alatea is parked on his side. Unbelievable. But it just shows, you know, how much the track can change even in between the sessions. You know, they've taken that line several times today, and yet a small difference in the rut has had this kind of outcome. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happened in turn two because it was at the back of the pack. You saw Timmy just going inside, and then he almost got sucked into one of the holes, which is a, around the trees. You know, when you get a hole around a tree on the sand dunes. Tanner Fausler dropping right down onto the sand. Is he going to move across and do it again, the wet sand? And you can see out in front, uh, Heike Kovalainen and doing the same thing. Speed bottom left of your screen. They're capable of around 125 miles an hour flat out. Remember, they weigh about 1,800 kilos, 550 horsepower into the go slow zone. So now they're on the pit lane limiter. Let's see, there's Alatea's car. So the Abt Cooper machine on its side at the side of the track. We're still waiting to see if any of the uh, results will be under investigation. Look at that, it's just wrecked bodywork everywhere. Clambering up the top to get through the gate. The, the right-hand side of that waypoint gate is gone. 
In theory, they should be able to gun it from there. Yes, they have. So they're, so they're away again. And in the background, uh, it's Timo Scheider for Carl Cox Motorsport trying to get up with these guys. Um, huge knock-on effect for the rest of the paddock. Of course, you know, uh, unfortunately, Katie Munnings won't get out. Clara Anderson won't get out. That is the frustration when you're sharing a drive. Uh, you're so keen to look to impress in the course of this race. But, of course, it does rely on your teammate bringing the car home in one piece for that driver switch, uh, which unfortunately hasn't happened for uh, Abt Cooper and Andresi Etekila in the today's race. I'm loving the fact we've got McLaren here with us. They were here with us, uh, talking to McLaren. There's uh, there's Emma Gilmore. Poor my old McLaren, though. I don't think they've ever seen any of their beautiful race cars quite so beaten up as they get in Extreme E. Um, you can see Cova Lion in super late on the brakes there. Uh, oh, is that him? Uh, I thought he was going into the switch zone there, but it, oh, this there it is. There it is. Yeah, so it was super late into the corner before. Faust coming in hot now. He'll go late on the brakes too. Harder for him to judge it. Tongue just slightly out, look, full concentration mode. This is coming in close, look at this. So, Nikki, it's really close between, there's only 11 seconds across the, no, sorry, I'm looking at the timing screen, which is not updated, so that's handy. Uh, on the screen, we'll find the, I'm saying red flag. Okay, they're going red. So, that means they're gonna get the drivers, they'll do the switch, and then they'll probably have a little clear up and then release the cars yes. based on the gaps coming in. So we do sorry? want to see the gaps coming in. No, don't leave okay, the all right. So how long do you think the red flag will last? It depends how long they feel yeah. they need to clear that area. So assuming Alatir is okay, and I'm pretty sure he was, because we saw a picture of a man looking unbelievably chilled for someone who just rolled a car. Um, but he's oh, done it He's done it actually recently. So the, the, all of these drivers will do their switch. They're gonna do it within the 45 or no? I, mean, I think it they will. Look like he's trying to do it particularly fast. I suppose it doesn't <laughs> matter because he. Oh no, he's back in. They're, they're okay. Not sure what they're doing there. Last time we did this, they all did the switch, went and queued up at the exit of the switch zone, and they released them based on the gaps when they came in. Take a deep breath, everyone, especially me and Nikki. <laughs> Right, where are the tea and biscuits? Okay. Wild. <laughs> what I would love to see, though, is some of the replays, because the start of that race was, uh, well, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely cracking. Start to season three of XE. Right, far right-hand side of your picture, Andretti Altaquila. On the, on the left-hand side at the front, Tanner Faust, look, is just in front of Nasser Alatia. Heike Kovalainen goes on the tight line, and that's the line Fraser McConnell took to such good effect because it's smooth. Look, look at the ground he gains on Faust. Now, here's Hansen looking up the inside of Scheider. Ah, Alatia shuts the door on Scheider. Scheider shuts the door on Hansen. Nowhere to go. So he did down the flag. I think Timo down the flag in turn two. Yeah. But again, to me, he was pushed into it. And some, he, you're on board with Timmy. Boom, he's got nowhere to go. And that's what I mean. You see, he just got sucked into the hole around the palm tree. And it went right the way over. Uh, the, on the plus side, oh, he did try and carry on. On the plus side, it, it's a, it's soft sand, Nicky, you know, and they, the team have got overnight rather than a couple of hours to fix it. This is the second roll in eight hours for that car. Uh, you know, it's... The, the it might be soft sand, but it's still very hard to hit. Yeah, and you can just... They just know, don't they? You can't believe it. Cannot believe it. And I can understand that. I can understand that. You just gutted, aren't you? You know, you put all this effort into getting to the start of the season and, and roll the car twice in eight hours. But the good thing is with the new season format is they get the opportunity to, to do it all over again, again tomorrow. tomorrow. Well, you've, <laughs> they won't want to do it the same way. <laughs> we hope. Ah, oh. uh, Heike Kovalainen uh, for JBXC on his debut in Extreme E is down with Laura. Let's have a catch up with him while we clear up the track. Well, Heike, that was a bit of a baptism of fire out there. A fair bit of chaos. Uh, we do hope both Timmy and NASA are OK. Talk me through it from how you saw it from the driver's seat. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I thought I, um, I had a good plan for the start. It exactly, worked exactly like I was thinking that, you know, let the others rush in and then I'll try to cut inside and get on the hyper on the uphill. And it worked OK until just the last minute where I, I don't know if I could have just sent it to the right, right hand side and, and get alongside uh, the McLaren, but I backed off and then the Nasser, he cut past me, so a bit disappointed about that. But then I could see that there was a big battle. Nasser was really on it and uh, he was quite determined, I guess, to make the move. And, and I could see that what happened to Katie this morning, I could see it happening. None of those guys wanted to give up the position. And then when I saw them rolling, I mean, there was space on the right for me to avoid it. Um, I mean, hopefully they're both OK. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, it was a fairly straightforward race to me circuit is in totally different condition now because they've they've um, uh, you know taken the ruts out between the between the last heat and this heat it's, and, uh, and it's much more slippery much less rutted so it's totally different um, 
it was actually quite nice, the circuit for, for once. But um, yeah, yeah, reasonable, reasonable here. I'm still not totally satisfied. I, I need to find a bit more, but uh, getting there. Yeah, absolutely. I can see how much you're learning already. It's great to see. Brilliant to have you with us. We'll see how Heather gets on as well. Thanks so much. Well done. Good luck. Okay, this is the second incident. So this is Alatia inside Tanner Fell, same place as Katie. Watch this, he actually rolls over the front of the McLaren. Now Tanner's got nowhere to go there. Uh, for me, both him and Hakey. Okay, well that's good, all three cars went the wrong way. <laughs> Timo down the flag. For me, if I was race control, I would look at that Nicky and go, you know what, Tanner had no choice. Hakey was avoiding an accident and so was Timo. So I think you don't give anybody a penalty for that. It's, or if, do you know what, if you give them all 10 seconds, it doesn't matter. Um, but you see what I mean? He's, where can he go? Fair enough, exactly. He, do, they, he, do they normally listen to you? Uh, what, the race control? <laughs> no, not really. They're, they're probably sometimes think, shut up, Coley. Um, but it, it's the toughest job being the stewards. But for the, this one, for me, is pretty clear cut. I suppose, yeah, the bonus is you can either give them all a penalty or nobody a penalty. As long as it's all the same penalty, it, it doesn't matter. So Mo the... But more important is the fact Alatia and Tanner are OK. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I'm, I'm always intrigued from a driver's perspective. You know, once we see the driver switch, how is this going to mentally affect the second driver coming out, you know, knowing that we've just seen two pretty big accidents, pretty big roles. I think they'll be all right. I think it'll be it'll be much more based on on you know what's the gap can I get there? And at the minute the gap is looking at the intervals. Hold on, the interval is 3.5 and 4.3. So you've got uh, Heda Hozas heading out 3.5 seconds ahead of Emma Gilmore. And then you've got, uh, for Carl Cox Motorsport, Christine GZ will be coming out 4.3 behind. So if they do it like we did last season, they'll release those drivers at that pace, if you like. They'll release them at that pace. So they go out and, and finish the race. They should then do their two laps and, and finish off. But Hold on, does that mean I can tape up the cell? OK, uh, Emma Gilmore for McLaren. We've just seen Tanner's car rolled over by Nasser al here and Nat Cooper. I wonder what Emma thought of that. Well, I'm down with Emma Gilmore now, just at the switch. Tanner Faust is still in the car. Emma, this must be really nerve-wracking. You're ready to go. The adrenaline is rushing through your veins and you're just waiting. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> that was really helpful. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the racing in extreme. Anything can happen and you just, yeah, got to adapt and, and roll with it. Not literally, but um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a pretty exciting first couple of laps. Yeah, and Tanner's put you in a decent position, all to play for now. What's the mindset, given that we've already seen a fair few rolls today? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, just keep going as fast as possible. We're sitting OK in the traction challenge. So, um, yeah, just have a clean run and bring it home. Yeah, still points to be won. It's the redemption race for a reason. Points are out there, but equally learnings for tomorrow as well. Absolutely, yeah, there's another day tomorrow. So, want to try and, you know, preserve the car as much as we can. But, um, yeah, bring it home. There's not much body work left on it, is there? <laughs> yeah, the poor old team, they've done an amazing job today. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully we've got enough spares there to, to get it all ready to go again tomorrow. There are a fair few busy garages, aren't there? Emma, I'll let you continue to focus in. Thanks so much. Best of luck. So, yeah, just a nervous wait, isn't it, to, head, to get back out, really? Oh, th there it is. Same. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it, should I, earlier? Timmy coming back in the same truck that Katie came back in earlier. Is that NASA in there as well? Are they? Are they? Uh, that might be quite a quiet journey, Nikki. It doesn't look like After they've got much to two, say to each other. Not a lot of chat going on, is there? Uh, <laughs> no, don't think they'll be going for a drink together afterwards. That's, um, uh, nobody's going for a drink in Saudi Arabia. Well, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you can still go for a drink. They you can. Don't have to drink alcohol. That's true. You can. <laughs> and, and of course, nice they're all racing tomorrow, so they they can't anyway. They're you know, uh, pro drivers just don't do that. That that's how you recover a car in extreme E. So we just stick a forklift under it and slide it out of the way. It's so quick. It is though. quick. It's efficient. I like it. It is quick. Uh, but, so why do you think they haven't done the driver switch? Or it just they decided, right, let's red flag it now and then we'll pick it up? I'm really not sure because for me, you can neutralise the race more easily at the exit of the of the switch zone. Because now if you ask Emma to wait 4.3 seconds to get in the car, that's pretty hard to, to do. Whereas getting a green light on a computer system to go 4.3, 3.2 or whatever it is easy. Uh, one thing that is interesting here is the mechanics are allowed to work on the cars. And remember, only three people are allowed in the switch zone. You've got a driver in the car, so you can actually have two mechanics in there working as long as the other driver hasn't gone in. So you might wait on the switch to give the mechanics a bit of time to work on the car, but 
I say it's slightly different protocol than we saw last year, and uh, I'm really not sure. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this replay. Oh, well, there we have, we're on board with the oh. Neon McLaren. <laughs> wow. The Cooper literally rolls straight across the bonnet. Uh, I wonder how Tanner Faust was feeling at that moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, Alatia was a long way up the inside, but just like it's the exact same piece of camel grass that took out Katie Mullins this morning. Pretty mad, Do we isn't see it? this often in Extreme? Uh, rolling over other cars, no. Rolling cars, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're pretty wild from that point of view. Uh, hence the name, you know, Extreme. Um, <laughs> Oh, we're going to have a chat with Tanner Faust, so Good. Yeah, we can I hear from hear Tanner from what it's like to take a very close look at an apt coupe for a, uh, rolling from over underneath. your windscreen. <laughs> yeah. We're still here down in the switch, so McLaren have made that driver switch, so I can now speak to Tanner Faust. What on earth did you see of the mayhem on those couple of laps? I heard that I had a gap to uh, the car behind, and um, so I just kept the hammer down, and as it were, and oh my gosh, out of nowhere, I thought I felt something, but then I literally saw NASA roll over the top of my um, little pretty brand new McLaren. And it was, I mean, I hear he's okay. And it, it seemed very gentle. Um, when we went around for the uh, yellow flag through that section, you could see that he had hit a grass berm on the inside, which was, you know, chest high. So it probably popped him right over, but I definitely had the front row seats to that one. Yeah, I think it was the same spot as Katie Munnings this morning. We are hearing now the restart will be from the start, obviously staggered in terms of the times you came into the switch zone. Emma is now in the car. What advice have you passed on to her to get this McLaren to the finish line? Because it's lost a fair bit of bodywork, Tana. Yeah, I, I just said that, um, you know, while the uh, little neon McLaren looks a little bit worse for the wear, it, she's running great. So just go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, as we were saying earlier, points are available here, but you can also learn a bit ahead of tomorrow. There's a second chance tomorrow, isn't there, for that grand final? I can't even say how much we've learned just in the last day and a half. Um, we've matched uh, pace with some of the quicker cars, the, the quickest, and, and that's um, a lot. It's a little too little too late. Here we are. We'd like to be fighting for the win, and we're fighting for uh, the best of the rest. But um, it's still a fight. We still want to win whatever fight we enter. And tomorrow's a whole new day from the beginning. So we're looking forward to it. And setup changes. Will you make any from, from now until tomorrow? Or do you feel you've got the car in the right window? I feel like we found a window that really works, especially with the ruts forming. Um, now it's kind of a predictable level of rut since they are managing the track between rounds. Uh, we struggled with setup for the, the first three times we were on the track, um, but we made great strides. So um, having the resources with McLaren there really, really helped to do that. And we're in a happy place. It's going to be a busy night for a few garages. Um, I guess you're just out the car. I'm looking at it. It may just be bodywork, but can you ascertain the extent of the damage? I guess we'll have to wait to see if Emma gets round. Yeah, you almost need to carry a body shop around with you on these events, but it's um, it, it feels like body damage to me. The car feels like it's running great, so we'll just have to keep pushing. Yeah, the red flag is because there's a, a lot of debris out on that course. Tana, thank you very much to you. Um, and here we go. We're about to get started again. Well, I'm wondering how long it'll be uh, before McLaren's uh, social media is showing the... Um, what was it I said? I doubt they've ever had a car that looked cool like that. And then Tana saying, my lovely, uh, pretty, brand new McLaren, <laughs> which, which is fair, isn't it? You know, and not quite so brand new now. So, yeah, apologies, McLaren. You know, don't let it put you off. Uh, there's Tamara Molinaro in the background. She is one of the two championship drivers. Just to her right is Andreas Backward, I think. Um, Andreas, uh, another World Rally Cross star. Tamara coming from a rally background. Tamara raced a few times last year. Andreas hasn't raced yet, but I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll get the call up at some point. Good to have the long backward uh, European Rallycross champion runner-up in the World Rallycross Championship. This was this morning. Katie Munnings looking up the inside. And you could see it bicycle for a split second. We discussed it this morning. She nearly got away with it. Um, and then if you watch the Cupra, in comes NASA. How high does he get on it? Higher. So again, almost, you know, but, but no. There isn't enough travel. So now for tomorrow, all the teams have got to say to their drivers, it, you can't you can't hit that piece of hammer, camel grass you can't well as Katie said she was like you know that was the only opportunity that was my last opportunity to make a pass uh, and I had to put all my cards on the table and it didn't pay off but it's unfortunately 
uh, yeah, yeah. If you, if you feel you're faster than the car in front, you know, if you're not you're not a racer, aren't you? If you don't go for a gap. And to be fair to both Katie and NASA, they were both a long way up the inside. The problem is the inside disappeared to a piece of camel grass. So there's a point at which you go, okay, I've got to back out of this. And both of them thought they'd get away with it, and both of them didn't. But I, you know what? I want to see them try, Nikki. I'd rather see them try. And they're all okay, as I say. That's that's all we really care about is that drivers are okay. Cars are replaceable. Soft rolls on sand, we're good. You want to see them try. How do their team principals feel? Um, uh, it, it's about... <laughs> it depends if the team <laughs> principal's paying or not, doesn't it? <laughs> well, ultimately, and also, will it bring home the points? <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Well, we're going to get this one back underway very soon. Well, getting themselves uh, ready to go again. They're in that start area. So what they'll do, Nicky, is they'll use the... They'll either do it manually, but I suspect probably via the lights. So you'll be told, you know, you're going P1, you're going P2, you're going P3. And literally the lights will change at the intervals that they came in at. So that was 3.5 between P1 and P2 and 4.3 for uh, for the next gaps. And when they've, how, they've, how have they lined up? Will they have chosen that position or are we going... So P1 is going to be head of Hossas. Now she, I think... I don't know if they've gone back to their original in grid. The middle there. They're, they're so has she chosen that? Or no, I think they're in their, their original positions. Right. Because okay. Emma's Emma's far over it's to got the, the side. Is J over JBXC there. were in the middle where they were. I was looking at the timing screen. Yes, they are. So they've slotted them in. Because to be fair, you're not going to get to turn one together. So it almost other than traction away from a specific grid slot, it kind of doesn't matter now whether you're inside or outside. You've got enough time up to turn one to take whatever your, your preferred racing line is. Fair enough. Now, obviously, Tanner was saying to Emma Gilmore, don't worry about the car. It's cosmetic. Cosmetic yeah, I love that. What did you say? Me. She's running great, or whatever. You know, she's running <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah. She might look a bit beat up, but she's running fine. Um, is that the case? I mean, aero, obviously, it's not a huge thing here. Does it make no. any difference when you've lost so many body parts? A, a tiny bit. I mean, yeah, you got those various cooling systems and things on the cars that you might prefer not to have sand chucked into, but nothing. <laughs> uh, well, certainly nothing based over the last couple of seasons, which which seems to be critical. Um, I'll, I'll have to eat those words, of course, when somebody overheats in the next race, won't I? But no, you're fine. I mean, we, we've seen cars finish races high up. We saw Ekstrom finish a race in season one, I want to say, without a door. That was pretty impressive. The, the door was completely off the car. A couple of cars have made it round with no doors. So in the command centre that we're sitting yes. here, are the teammates, the other drivers, talking to the driver, or is it just the engineering team, the team principal? What, what's the conversation going on between the driver and command centre? As, looking at these guys, I'd say none of them are, because Timo Scheider, there he is, little wink from the legend, the man himself, uh, one of the coolest blokes in the paddock, he, he really is. Um, they're not wearing headsets. So basically anybody who's wearing a headset in there could be talking to the other drivers. Sometimes you'll see if they get a good result, you'll see the driver will grab the headset and, and shout something to their, to their teammate. Um, but as a general rule, it'll be kind of, you know, spotter slash engineer. There we go. See a little bit of advice going through to, to Emma. Oh, Gary Paffett, a familiar face from the Formula E paddock as well for Neil McLaren. And Emma, you could see there with a hand on the wheel as well. So she's just sending back a, you know, a received message. Sometimes you actually send a message back. Sometimes it's just OK. So you click the OK button, which, which tells the team you've received the message. Yeah, when, when you're in the heart of a race, you don't really want to go, yeah, OK, got you, roger that. Just tap the button and go. So nothing for the drivers in the command centre to do now other than watch their teammates try and bring it home. A nerve-wracking position for the drivers, uh, the teammates just watching on. A bit helpless, really. You can't do anything no. uh, apart from watch and keep your fingers crossed. So there we have it. The lights are flashing, red and green. Emma Gilmore giving herself a little nod there. But any minute, it should be Hedda Hossas taking, uh, starting first. She's got a three and a half second gap over Emma Gilmore. And then there's seven seconds between Emma Gilmore and Christina GZ. So Gilmore will, will put the chase, well, Gilmore and Gigi will put the chase on here. It's going to be interesting to see who uses their Inoa Hyperdrive where. So for me, your best chance of overtaking on this track, other, other than in, in the carnage of turn one and two, which is always, you know, there's always a chance there when you've got multiple cars. We've seen Johan do it on the, what I would call the middle straight, if you want to call it that, which is, uh, where would, where do you reckon? Probably, so, uh, here we go. Pozas is off and the McLaren's off and there we go. So they've been set off at those intervals. It was super quick, wasn't it, between them in the end? 
for Hozas leads Emma Gilmore in P2. I feel like they let the uh, the Carl Cox machine go a bit early, but inside lineup for Hozas, she's looking for that flat, smooth traction, and actually Gilmore wow. just blasts straight past her. So Gilmore's used the Anoa hyperdrive to try and get the uh, the lead there. Clearly out in front. I wonder if there's a problem for the JBXZ machine because. Head of Hozas has been eaten alive here. Christine GZ looking to come around the outside as well, and she does. So maybe, yeah, problem for JBXE. That's a shame. That is such a shame. Uh, but again, no brilliant strategic move for Emma Gilmore using her hyperdrive, uh, Anoa hyperdrive there, to make sure she gained traction and took Head of Hossa there uh, before going into turn three. Yeah, nicely done. So to be honest, you could get on the radio now to Emma and say, you know what, chill, let's manage the gap. But that is going to depend a bit on how chill GZ is feeling. And GZ is going to want to win this. There's eight championship points up for grabs for the winner of the redemption race. Six, four, two, and one for the remaining positions. And uh, I'm afraid P5 and P4 are already gone to the two retired cars. So let's see if Christine GZ is going to use it on the straight. She, you want to wait until... So Yes, she does. So she, the reason she's waited a little longer there is what you don't want is when the wheels are already spinning on the exit of the corner, the last thing you want is full power. So you wait until the wheels stop spinning, you've got a bit of momentum in the car, then you get on the hyperdrive and you really use it. We've seen people use it for overtaking, we've seen them use it off the start for the whole shot. In, in fact, Nick, a couple of the tracks last year, the hills were so severe up that they would use it on the run up the hill to try and get a bit of extra power there. So especially if you're, you're looking for that Continental Traction Challenge fastest time, which is still up for grabs. So, I mean, looking at the timings, there is a gap of five seconds at the moment between Emma Gilmore and Christine GZ. I mean, possible, doable, she could gain in the next couple of laps. Yeah, she's also, though, I've just noticed, just popped up on our screen and yours, is the contact between car eight, which is Carl Cox Motorsport, and car 23, which is Andretti Al Tequila, is under investigation. Now, that can only be turn two, where the Carl Cox machine moved across, and uh, so, OK, the stewards are going to look at that. that. That might mean that even if uh, Carl Cox gets a good result in this one. Is that going to be deep there? No, long way around to the long way around to the left. I'm not sure if that was a mistake. Uh, the JBXC has stopped out on track. You can see the flag actually it's in the second corner of the Continental Traction Challenge. So that is up by waypoint six. So that is definitely a problem for that car. Ah, oh, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? You know, we had five cars and a bit of carnage and now basically you know we're, we're down, down to, to two one. and yeah and, and uh, Thousand Gilmore out front, and, and the under investigation for Carl Cox there is Hosas parked on the side of the road, bit of heat haze look, and yeah, tech failure for the JBXC machine. I tell you what, such a, shame. Such, such a GZ's making a, GZ's making a, a fight of this. She's only 3.2 seconds back. Thing is as well, Nikki, the stewards could well go. You know what? No incident. It's a racing incident. It's turn one, five into one doesn't go unlucky. So GZ might as well press on and see what she can do. She has used her Inoa hyperdrive, so this is now down to just pure pace and trying to close down that gap. Gap at the minute is 3.6. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Yeah, as you say, I mean, if she can close the gap, then maybe if she does get a small penalty, uh, then it won't actually impact yeah, the result could, of the race. You, if you could get in, yeah, if you could get in front, I mean, she'd want to be in front by a good five seconds in, in case they get a penalty. The minimum you ever get really is five, isn't it? Gilmore on board fighting with the car. And remember, they're, they're fighting for the difference between, you know, eight points for the winner of the redemption race, six points uh, for the runner-up. So really, there's two points in it between them. But that could mean anything by the end of the season. Every point counts. Well, we've seen it won by the tiniest of margins exactly. we really have. Last year, it was won by an absolutely tiny margin. It came down to the extra points for the Continental Traction Challenge and all sorts of things. And also a win's a win, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was two really points. Brilliant for the team. Two points last year. OK, and in the first year, it was uh, it was equal on points at the end, and it was done on countback. So, yeah, two points is absolutely everything. That is a, that's a great shout. Yeah, and if we look back to the results from uh, season one and season two, obviously uh, the Neon McLaren, oh, sorry, JBX team, they came in at yeah, they were, third and ninth. At a, at a rough season last year, finishing in P9. They did get a P3, but they were a long way down in the standings. Kovalainen looks like he's enjoying himself, doesn't he? The chat with Laura earlier on, he really does look like he's he's having a great time. I like the fact he said, I thought I could maybe send it out to the right, so he's got some ideas. Do you think it's because you come with, with no pressure? Because yeah. there's, there's not quite the expectation. Cause it's something new, past isn't it? Performance. It's something exactly. new. And he will, you know, he will become more and more competitive. Emma Gilmore going to come around. 
in the McLaren up to the finish line jump. It's not looking too brand new, but uh, for a redemption race result, that's pretty decent. So it's a win for Faust and Gilmore with McLaren after the restart of the redemption race P2. For Timo Scheider and Christine GZ, though the Carl Cox Motorsport machine is under investigation for turn one. Boy, what was that about tomorrow? We, we need to rebuild. Yes, Tanner, thumbs up. A lot, there's a lot of work to do on that car, isn't there? But but it's it's come home in one piece. So hopefully, just uh, superficial stuff. Bit of feedback there from Emma to the team front of that car had another car roll over the top of it. I mean, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. If you're wondering about cooling that. and stuff, the transmissions and, and the uh, the motors still need cooling. They, you know, they still run at high, high temperatures in electric vehicles. Uh, one of the things you have to manage, things like battery temperature, motor temperatures, to make sure that the performance remains the same throughout a, a race or a weekend. You see that a lot, don't you, in, in, uh, in Formula E as well, management of, of the rest and, and the transmission and things, powertrain. Absolutely, particularly, you know, in these hot conditions as well. Uh, that's a, a massive challenge for the drivers to keep the battery temperature in the perfect kind of optimum operating window. Um, and I'm sure there's definitely taken that into consideration here, looking at the climate and uh, how lovely it's sunny. So they're going to have to recover the JBXE machine from the track. Redemption race winners, Faust and Gilmore for Neil McLaren XE. Just back on the, uh, the the battery that we were talking about, the obviously McLaren, they supplied the Gen 1 and Gen 2 battery yes. yeah. in Formula E. So they have a huge amount of experience, real pioneers when it comes to the electrification of vehicles. Let's take a look at the redemption race results. So unfortunately, Andretti, a DNF. Abt Cooper, a DNF. JBXE, another DNF for three teams. They did not complete, no points for them. But it was Carl Cox Motorsport in their debut performance, their first race in Extreme E, who have managed to take home six points. And then Neom McLaren, Tanner Faust and Emma Gilmore with the win in the redemption race. Eight points for them. Okay, so that was um, that was pretty carnage. I'd like to see a bit less yeah. carnage and a bit more racing in the in the grand final. If you watch the last couple of seasons, obviously format changes. So last year was a single car run followed by racing, and then we had semi-finals, two semi-finals from which two cars in each went through, and then the the crazy race, and one car went through to make the five cars. This time, because we're doing double headers each weekend, it's uh, two sets of racing during the uh, during the the qualifying period. And then on to the finals, so straight to the finals. Right, we're going to head down to the paddock. Let's have a catch up with uh, Laura Winter. Well, Tina joins me now of McLaren. Congratulations, a win in that redemption race. Brilliant stuff to see. Tana was talking to me a lot about the setup of the car and getting it in the right window. He said you feel you've done that now. What's that process been like today? Yeah, so from this morning, we had a quick look at the data and our comparison to other teams, uh, trying to see where we were and where we were losing time in particular. Um, we've gone through everything the car's doing in those areas of the track, um, and that's where we've looked for improvement. So we've made some small mapping changes and some small setup changes to the car, but obviously we're not going to talk about them. No, I can never get any information out of anyone in this paddock. Let's get to that race. It must have been pretty chaotic to be in it and pretty nerve-wracking to watch as well. What, what was going through your mind watching in the garage? Well, the first problem was when we were when we made contact with the number eight car. We're not entirely sure what's happened there. Race controller reviewing it now. Um, you know, the worry is always that's a show-stopping accident. Um, Tanner was able to carry on, which is great. Um, and then, of course, with the red flag, nobody quite knew what was happening and how the restart procedure was going to work. So there was lots of conversation and confusion. As you saw, the race director instructed us not to do the driver switch. We got halfway through ours. Some teams completed them. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, just really not knowing what was going on was the biggest problem. Well, you got it done in the end. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Right, let's take a look back at uh, what happened to the McLaren. This is Nasser al -Atir looking up the inside of Tanner Faust. Tell you what, when you see it at full speed, you realise it was pretty brutal. And then where he's, he actually digs in at the bottom of that, that sandbar, and that's when, look, watch this. So it goes over, watch how quickly the Apt Cooper comes to a stop when it's upside down, Nicky. So it digs in here, look, and it's practically parked. Do you see there? Instant stop, and Faust has got absolutely nowhere to go. Watch Tanner's expression here. Yeah, that's a good shout. As he said, <laughs> best of you in the house. 
Uh, what was quite it? nonchalant, front, to be front honest. Front row seats, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? There was just a slight raised eyebrow from yeah. Tanner. Very and true. then he's on the radio. I've just been rolled out. And then, and my, That's I think, experience for you, it is. isn't it? <laughs> but I think my favourite is also NASA, who's just sort of sitting there in his belts going, Door's Not gone, again. wrecked the car, sorry, yeah. And he, he only had a role recently in uh, in one of the rounds of the Rally Raid Championship, so, yeah. Brilliant stuff. Well, there we have it. Uh, let's take a look at the entries into the grand final coming up very shortly. Christopherson and Arlen Katalinski for the RXR team. Then we've got Hansen and Taylor, Ekstrom, Sands, McConnell, Gutierrez, and Anderson and Sorensen coming up very soon. Redemption race there. Tanner Faust and Emma Gilmore, just eight points in that race. We're going to take a quick look at the grid play ceremony from earlier on today. Hello, welcome to season three of Extreme, and welcome to our first grid play ceremony of the year for round one here in the Desert X Prix. But the biggest share of the public vote will now be donated. NASA Alatia stepping up. Where is this going? Oh. Oh. Chip Ganassi. In the nighttime helmet EV, Chip Ganassi. Get the full share of NASA Alatia's votes. And there we have it. OK, Axiona Science. Next up, Matthias. Bam, straight in, number three. Veloce. Next up, to make your selection, Kevin Hansen. Slots it in number two, Johan. Quick off the mark for RXR. <laughs> Come on now, Johan. Slots it in number one. And there we have it. That is the grid for the first grand final of the season. Attention all teams, this is race control. Stand by for the start of the Desert x Prix. The grand final is about to begin. Energize your systems and prepare to race. Here we go then, our first grand final of the year. The teammates are waiting, desperate to get in the car. They'll be hoping their car comes in in P1, but oh, we're just in some carnage in the redemption race. So a long way to go before we even get to thinking about driver switches. Absolutely right. Let's take a look at who is going to be in the grand final. So RJ Anderson will be kicking off for Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing. Fraser McConnell will be in the driving seat for X44, looking to uh, start the race uh, as they mean to go on this season. Matthias Ekstrom for Accione Sites in uh, the middle position there in P3. Then we've got Kevin Hansen for Veloce Racing and Johan Christofferson for RXR. Well, the first start of the redemption race was carnage. Let's see if these guys get away better. McConnell, they're staring at the lights. Hammer down now, release the handbrake and release all that horsepower down towards turn one on the inside line. It's a great start for RJ Anderson, backs the car in, runs Matthias Ekstrom out right. Ekstrom takes that long line in the background. Watch out here for Johan Christophson. The RXR machine, he's passed three cars already. Going to try and take the McConnell line around the outside. RXR outside, inside line for Veloce. Rear end of Brady McConnell kicks up super high. It is RXR who lead from the outside of the grid. That is a Christofferson special. Copy in the move of Fraser McConnell earlier on today. Goes from outside to inside and gets the whole shot. That's outstanding. Wow, what a phenomenal start. Huge congratulations to RXR. The strategy there that Johan Christofferson played was absolute perfection. Now he just has to uh, will defend his position from Veloce Racing. They're not going to make it easy for him. No, they're not. Kevin Hansen's all over the back of him already on board now. Looking forward. Visibility's not too bad. Here you are with Kevin. Look, gritting his teeth. Full concentration, full lock through the right-hander. Anybody got an Inoa hyperdrive left for this straight to see if they can make a pass? The pack is so close together. I reckon they've all used it off the start, looking at this. Oh, Christopherson gets a little bit sideways, drops the car down now onto the smooth sand. They are really flirting with that water. We saw all the cars getting sucked in there this morning, including that one, the Axiona Science, that Ekstrom's at the wheel of. That took a trip into the Red Sea with Lyre Sands this morning. 
Christofferson through the right hand to Kevin Hansen in behind. They bump up through this section. It could not be closer. Unbelievable. I mean, who would have thought that Anderson, who actually we thought had the advantage being on the left hand side at the start of the race, is actually disadvantaged and is right at the back and is going to have to somehow claw his way up to the front of that grid. He got to turn one first as well, Nicky. That's the thing. He was in the lead in turn one and Christofferson was right at the back, but he took that line that we saw work this morning. Just goes to show you as well when people say, oh, you can't win from P5 on the grid. Yes, you can. And we saw McConnell came from P3 earlier on yesterday. We got a whole day of racing again to go tomorrow. So you know, we tell the drivers less moaning about grid position. Get on with it. You read my mind. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> Christopherson has just shown it can be done. So stop complaining. But brilliant start for Rosberg X Racing here today. The first. Oh. First race in Neom. And Hansen sideways on the landing there, wasn't he? It was, look at Ekstrom, he's so close behind the blockchain machine, and Fraser McConnell's in there as well. The gaps at the minute, there's a 2.9 gap between P4 and P5, the X44 Vita Carbon and the GMC Hummer, EV Chick Ganassi Racing. But at the front, the gap is 1.4 across the top three, only 0.7 between first and second place of Rosberg X Racing and Veloce. So wide open, this could well come down to the, the driver switch and then the, the second drivers as well. How close is this for round one? Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So close. Uh, but of course, they're going to have at the back of their mind, you've got to be careful because we saw it all unfold uh, in the earlier race, in the, the redemption race. Uh, car spinning, particularly on those grass verges. So all it takes is taking the wrong line and we can see mistakes happen so easily here. So no doubt they were not going to be putting all of their cards on oh, the table at the moment. Ah, Hummer EV which. off to the side of the track, so that was a mistake or a broken car, but Anderson, RJ Anderson, is parked at the side of the road. They were in P5 anyway. He looks okay, his belts are off. He's gonna climb out, get himself somewhere safe, push the car into neutral. Meanwhile, out front, where has Ekstrom gone? The science machines drop back. So the site, 2.7 seconds. I don't know what's happened to Matthias. Kevin Hansen is still right there. Look at them dipping the left wheels in the water, trying to find the smooth sand and the extra traction. They're going to come in really close. We've got a yellow flag situation somewhere out on track. So we'll have a slow zone. It's saying at waypoint 17. That's just popped up on our time screen. There is Ekstrom. He's, he's only three seconds back, but he was right on the back of these two. So maybe a mistake to be somewhere while we were looking at RJ Anderson parked up. Christofferson's keeping the door shut, isn't he? He knows what he's doing, but Kevin Hansen's raced him so many times in the World Rallycross Championship. Just a little gap now for Johan from Kevin, and Matthias is still right in the mix, so just a tiny little mistake has cost him a couple of seconds. Oh, it's such a shame. Also, as they're so bunched up, you can see the sand really still causing a few visibility issues, but of course you've got the lights on the back of the car to help them see the car ahead. Uh, so hopefully nothing too dramatic, but it, it's always going to make it more of a challenge. It is indeed. You want to be in that P1 position. Interesting, isn't it, that Christofferson can't really break away. You'd think if it was enough of an advantage, he'd be able to break away so late on the brakes. Now he puts on the switch zone speed limiter. And that's there's Anderson. Uh, he's parked right next to the jump. This jump's not going to be comfortable like that because you want to go over it flat out and land the car flat. Drive it. You can see, in fact, Kevin Hansen moved across to the side to try and find somewhere you know, lower to, to drop it off the crest. So, OK. Good job it's not a great big gap jump. You wouldn't be able to make it with the pit lane speed limiter on, so yeah. OK, into the switch zone then. So coming in, what are the gaps as they come in? It's 3.1 seconds between Rosberg X Racing and Veloce. And then uh, coming back to Ekstrom. Ekstrom looks like he's a fair way back. Here's the start again. Look, look at RJ Anderson on the inside. He's got this done in his head. Watch Johan, though. Look how early Johan's turning it on the outside. Fraser McConnell goes for the same line, but Fraz is too deep in the pack. So on the inside line, look, and then the Kevin Hansen look, he's thinking, hello, thank you very much up the inside of Extra. Meanwhile, Christopherson's come all the way round the outside, and then Fraz gets a bad bounce and has to pull it back in to, uh, to avoid hitting the waypoint. So it all happened there, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I'm just glad to see all five cars got away cleanly. On board the Harmer, this is, so that's, uh, yeah, you, you can see the visibility. Ah! So he, he does, he rolls. So Anderson is unsighted by the dirt. He pulled out of the roost to try and see where he was going. Right, and this is uh, Fraser McConnell. So on board with Fraz. Steering that's extremely heavy. I think his power steering is gone. Do you see, he can barely turn the wheel. So it looks like the X44 machine has retired as well. He has, so, so Fraser McConnell's gone too.
OK, we're going to have a chat with uh, Johan Christofsson as you see the cars heading out for their second two laps. Johan Christofferson from the outside line, grid, posi grid position one. One I know you didn't want, you have just got, got to the front of this race, out in front, put Michaela in the best possible position to bring it home. Talk me through it. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to, to... I had a plan on the start and it, it did work out. Uh, it's very difficult when you turn into T1 because there's so much dust. Uh, but anyway, uh, from there on, I tried to be safe open up a little bit of gap in the end and then uh, yeah hopefully Michaela can can bring this home but it's going to be tricky because Molly is fast and uh, the truck is very rough so it's easy to make a mistake but it's all gone your way so far we'll see thanks so much good luck what a great start from him it's going to be Michaela Arlen Kuslinski who is going to be stepping into the driving seat now you know what I'm loving about this? So remember, Arlen Kotlinski replaced Taylor in this squad, and it's Molly Taylor who's chasing her in the Veloce machine. So Molly Taylor will want to get past. She'd love to. Yeah, there's no malice between them, but still, you know, you always want to show, look, I'm the quickest. I, I, I can get this done. Taylor is closing the gap down. It was three seconds. It's 1.5 now. They've all got their Enoa hyperdrive. They won't use it until they're a little way down the straight, if they use it at all. Let's see if either of them tries. I don't think Taylor will do it this lap because she's not quite close enough. So she'll do a whole nother lap and see if she can use it on the last lap to pass. And likewise, Arlen Kotlinski's hanging on to it to defend from that move. Yeah, but you know where they're going to want to pass? <laughs> Up here on the right-hand side, and we know what incidences have been yeah, going on don't, there. Don't do it there. Stay don't. well clear of it. <laughs> don't do it there. So you saw Fraser McConnell bringing the X44 Vita carbon machine back, so it's still operational, but just uh, not with a race face on. Still got the yellow flag. Remember, that's for the little drop-down jump at Waypoint 17 where the uh, Chip Ganassi racing machine is parked. Here's the flags, which give you an idea of how scattered out bottom right of your screen where the different cars are. How far back is Lyra Sand? She's 14 seconds back, so something happened to them on the way into the switch because the gap was big on the way in. I don't know exactly what it was. Taylor now all over close, the back though. here of Arlen yeah. Kotlinski. Between them. Trying to find a way through. Really closing in on the RXR car. The Veloci team uh, looking to really show, well, bring performance to this season, I think. Um, what? OK, so oh. that's, OK. Taylor's, for some reason, Taylor looked to me like she ran wide. Where, where's the RXR going? Why did she miss the waypoint? Because it's the step down jump, unless they've had permission to do that. <laughs> OK, this uh, it's going to go at the stewards, 100%. So, OK, pick this apart. Molly Taylor looked like she ran... W they have had permission. They've had permission to miss that jump. We've just right. heard from race control, so there won't be a penalty for that. Taylor ran wide, and she then used her hyperdrive to try and gain the time again, but that was on the way into the, to the slow zone, so she's then had to kill it straight away, so she's lost what I think was her best chance of overtaking on the straight as she gets sideways on the landing. So that's put that's advantage RXR. So how does that happen? So she just wasn't given the information that there was a slow zone coming up, or no, why would you I, use I, it then? I think just because she'd ran wide, or I don't know if she went the wrong way in the dust. She, you know, if you lose too much time, the best way to gain it back immediately is to use the hyperdrive, go full power just for that four seconds, close the gap back down. But unfortunately, you know, advantage. going into a slow zone, you, you then cut it straight away and, and, and lost the four seconds of power. So what, once you cut it, that's it, it's gone. You can't use it again later on. Oh, well, that is a shame for, uh, for Molly Taylor there. But RXR, Rosberg X Racing, do a phenomenal job with Michaela up front at the moment. Nearly seven seconds ahead of Molly Taylor of Venocci Racing. Yeah, that's a big old gap now. They'll be on the radio to Arlen Kotlinski and just saying, you know what, you can you can chill a bit, you've got a bit of space. She, here she uses the Enoa Hyperdrive. That's exactly where I thought she would use it. I thought she'd have to use it to defend from Taylor, who would be doing the same thing, but Taylor's used it earlier on in the lap, and uh, unfortunately they're not going to be able to find a way past now. So pulling away here as much as possible. Um, other than having more of a time cushion, is there any advantage of being further ahead? <laughs> no, not at this point. No extra I mean, at, at, this, <laughs> look, at this point, you obviously, you know what it's like. Anything can happen. You don't, want, you know, we don't want to tempt fate. But things like uh, uh, tires coming off rims, little technicals with the car. Clearly, the bigger the gap you've got, the better chance you've got of getting it over the line ahead if, if something's gone wrong. But um, yeah, should be should be a done deal. But let's not give them the commentators curse just yet. About a third of a lap to go. Well, coming up then, on to the last few crests. Christofferson and Arlen Kotlinski didn't have the easiest of starts to this weekend, did they? 
Just a few little issues caught in traffic in Q1. In Q2, you saw how pumped Johan Christofferson was because he knew he'd done enough of a job to get them up into the final. Over that crest jump towards the end of the lap. Coming around now, just a couple of corners to go. They won the first round in Saudi last year. They've won five of the ten events in Extreme E in the history of this series. And with just a couple of corners to go, coming up towards the finish line jump, on board that car is Michaela Arling Kotlinski for RXR. Over the finish line, they take the win in round one of 2023 Extreme E. Brilliant fight back after an amazing pass by Christofferson in the run to turn two. P2 goes to Hansen and Taylor for Veloce. It'll be Ekstrom and Sant in P3. I think, I think we may have heard a, a swear there, so apologies. Uh, emotions running high. Over the line for Acciona Science. She said, I, I think she said I had the wrong slow zone. So I think she was breaking for the wrong slow zone, then realised, gunned it and got back on the power. Didn't see what happened to Ekstrom and Sands, but they dropped back just a little bit and that put them out of the fight. But could have been super close, but it's it's pretty much uh, business as usual for RXR. Missed the title by the tiniest of amounts last year. They win round one this year. Arlen Kotlinski and uh, Johan Christofferson. Fantastic performance by them. Yeah, and this is where it really counts, isn't it? You want to start the season so you can continue that momentum. What they will have learned today was absolutely invaluable. As, as we heard from Tanner Faust earlier, he said just a day and a half of being on the track here. They've learned so much coming into season three uh, and being the winners of today is going to be so useful. Interesting that, uh, yeah, Ganassi X44, Long who were winners of the first qualifying. Yeah, they were, yeah. Heats. Didn't go their way in that. Yeah, I, I just, I think, what I think what today has reminded us, if you'd forgotten in the sh couple of short months since the end of last season, is anything can happen in this series. We've seen cars rolling over the top of each other, cars rolling on their own. We've seen contact in the first corners. We've seen championship favourites struggle in qualifying and then come from P5 on the grid to get the whole shot. We've seen new drivers putting in some incredible pace. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great, hasn't it, for a round one. Yes, the finals weren't quite as close as we thought they might be. They, they were right up until the very last lap and then just that little gap after the mistake on which, uh, which was the slow zone area for Taylor. They'll be disappointed with that. But I think, as you said earlier on, Nikki, the fact we get to go again tomorrow is pretty cool. So what do you think the key to winning today's race was? The start of the race for Johan Christofferson? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that was just, yes. I mean, that that's where he won it without a shadow of a doubt. It was a brilliant move. You saw Fraser McConnell was trying to do the same thing. Interestingly, Kevin Hansen's move for Veloce around the outside, which would have put him inside in turn two, would have been enough in most other cases. But with Christopherson coming in on, on what we've called the McConnell line, um, it used to be the Loeb line. It always <laughs> used to be Loeb that found the line. So it's pretty fitting that Fraser McConnell <laughs> found it this time, having replaced Sebastian Loeb. Definitely the start. Also interesting, you, you know what you said about Tanner earlier on? He just said, look, this is about consistency in qualifying. You have to get to the grand final. There's no way back up like there was last year. You can fight your way through. Got to be in the final to stand the chance to win it. So I think look for people measuring their risk a little bit more in qualifying and, and then risk it for the biscuit when you get to the final. So the McConnell line, are we going to see more drivers going for that tomorrow? 100%, <laughs> because they're all going to look at what Fraser did in Q1 and then what Johan did in the final. It, it's a no-brainer if you're not on the inside. What the interesting thing for me is if you are on the inside, you kind of need to nail it on and make them go around the outside. But then look what Kevin Hansen did. That puts them inside there. So it's, it's wide open. It's not guaranteed. Not at all. <laughs> But it definitely keeps things interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, we're getting a race control decision on RXR. What about? Oh. 136 <gasps> second penalty oh, for car disaster. six. Slow zone speeding. Disaster. Gone on the gas too early. And that's going to hand the win then to Molly Taylor and Kevin Hansen for Veloce. Oh, the podium as well. No way. So that means that... Uh, yes, Velo Veloce P1, Acciona Science, Science have moved into P2. Yes, thank you. <laughs> OK, oh, well, uh, Christopherson and Arlen Kotlinski are not going to like that. I know that the, the team can appeal if they want to, but they're, they're in P3. It's still a podium. It's not a disaster with nine rounds to go, but they just won. And, that you know, they'll be... They'll, 
they will be feeling a little bit aggrieved about last year and some of the incidents that happened there. They just missed the title. I'd love to see uh, a shot of them now. Molly Taylor Who's going to be telling relieved. them? Uh, yeah, good shout. Who is going to be telling them? Who is going to be telling them? I hope it's not Laura. <laughs> Molly gets her cap, headed to the top step of the podium. Fantastic stuff. So it is for Lot J that take the win after a penalty for RXR. Drama. So now we're going to hear the P3 interview. This is with RXR, who literally two minutes ago thought they were on the top step of the podium. Well, Michaela, I can see it written all over your face, the disappointment over the line first, but it is third. Talk me through what has happened. We're hearing a 136 second penalty here for speeding. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication. I thought it was 18 and not 17. Uh, so when I got there and I saw the flashing yellow, you know, it's, it's too late. So uh, it's a disappointment, but I mean, in the end, uh, you wanted an amazing start. Uh, that was really great. And uh, yeah, sorry about that thing, but we take your P3 uh, and uh, it's a new day tomorrow. It is a new day tomorrow. You have a second chance, Johan. And look, it shows that while well, this morning started with you guys, you know, not in contention, you came straight through to contention with that brilliant start. Uh, yeah, I mean, the day wasn't the best until uh, the after waypoint one in the final, really. So, I mean, in the end, standing here with P3, of course, is, uh, is a relief in the end because it could have been so much worse. The, the racing is really tough. and. Especially when it's, uh, you know, two out of three uh, starts of the weekend with, with that important stop position, it's a lottery or whatever. So, of course, that's very important to get those points and we look forward for tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry for the result today, but it is P3, as you say. Enjoy the podium. Thank you. Not sure they'll be enjoying the podium quite as much as they would have been three, four minutes ago. It, it is gutting for them. Interesting, Nikki, about the miscommunication about the, about the gates. So difficult, isn't it? You think, how can there be, you, you know, you, you come into the race thinking, surely they know that information, but there is so much going on. There's so much for the, them to consume. Oh, you, um, it was way too late. In, in the background, Taylor was locked up. And if you remember, Taylor had gone a gate early. She went on 16. Uh, we're going to catch up with Aciona Sainz. Let's go and have a catch. P2, P2. Well, Matthias and Leia are here just debriefing the race in front of us. Leia, just sum it up for us. P2, but I know you want more. Yeah, of course. I think uh, we have the pace to, to try to win races. Of course, it's not a bad result. Uh, we will, it's a long championship, so it's a good way to start. But uh, I think we, we, can, we can win this year. Well, congratulations, Matthias. We are running out of time, so congratulations, but we'll speak to you a little bit afterwards. OK, enjoy the podium for now. <laughs> a thumbs up is enough. Thank you. Sending them off to the podium quickly. Going to get that done swiftly. I think we'll have, we'll have to have a chat with Matthias later. Yeah, he was smiling. I wonder why. <laughs> no, he was looking very happy with that result. Couldn't pick a winner for tomorrow. I really couldn't. You know, if you look at the pace of the different teams, yes, RXR were, were, were brilliant in the final today and are, are arguably a bit unlucky, but um, there are a bunch of teams. You know, top qualifier, Aciona Science, yeah. Loads of opportunities for different winners tomorrow. Kevin Hansen just stood in front of me and said, so what, we've won, have we? <laughs> yes, Kevin, you have won. Yes. I know, I'm sure you're delighted. Just sum it up, because that was probably a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, it was such a great turn one. We pulled off the great strategy there, and I was following you on for all the run and uh, handed over quite okay position to Molly, and she did an amazing job. So, I mean, to get a win, no matter how you get a win, it's a great win. So we're so, so cool with Lockjean ourselves. Molly, a win, first one in season three. You get to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, it's awesome having uh, two chances every weekend. So, yeah, today went really, really well. Um, but for sure, you know, we've got a big day on tomorrow. But we'll um, take all the positives from today. And it's just been, yeah, such a great uh, week so far with the team and Kevin. And, uh, yeah, we're really happy. Brilliant stuff. Enjoy the podium. Let's go. Well, some very happy faces there. <laughs> very different side uh, to the story, of course, in the RXR garage. But... Um, Good to see the Veloce team happy. Molly Taylor and Kevin Hansen, a cracking job today. So let's take a look at the results. So it was a DNF for Team Chip Ganassi, unfortunately. Uh, McConnell and Gutierrez finished fourth with Christofferson and Arlen Kozlinski in third for RXR after that unfortunate penalty. 130-something seconds, which put them back from first into third. Second place 
achieved by the Chetienza Science team with Matthias Ekstrom and Lyle Science and P1. The Veloci guys, Kevin Hansen and Molly Taylor, looking very pleased indeed. Let's take a look at the grand final winner of the Desert E Prix, X Prix, the start of season three here for Extreme E in Neom, Saudi Arabia. What a shot, eh? What a venue. Nikki, we've borrowed you from Formula E. You know how you have. How, how, can you no, tell? No, not at all. Honestly, mate, you've been brilliant. As we said earlier, sending our love to Jenny Gow for a speedy recovery and, and a return to the commentary box. But have you enjoyed it? I've loved it. It's been a truly phenomenal uh, experience, I must say, watching these guys and girls battling it out uh, in what an incredible location. Second Who would have thought Axiona you would have a race XCT. alongside the race? Do you think we should get extremely. some jumps into Formula E? I mean, we don't do badly. We do, we do have a few somersaults. I've seen a few launches. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've seen a few launches. Just we not, do quite yeah. well turning our cars upside down, actually. <laughs> so we could probably challenge you on the first one. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> there we go I mean, then. Unexpected, wasn't it? But what a moment for these guys. I think when you're unexpected, unexpectedly suddenly promoted to P1. I guess it now makes it even sweeter. For the winning team. Great, National great way Anthem. to start. Season three for Extremely. Top three on the podium win for Veloce, P2 for Acciona Science, P3 for RXR in the dying seconds of that race. That huge penalty for a misunderstanding. It's so hard to get the whole weekend to come together. Nikki, you know, just a tiny little mistake like that. And Michaela knew, she knew straight away. And when you see the replay, you can see how deep she braked into that section. So yeah, not ideal. They know they've got the pace. We know a bunch of teams have got the pace. I mean, three potential winners stood on the podium here. X44 right up there. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. I can't wait. Absolutely. I think that's what I love about this championship as well. The caliber of drivers. You've got the best of the best of the best really going up against each other. All so passionate. Uh, some phenomenal uh, teams involved as well. Everyone working so hard to bring home the results. There we go. Trophies are... Uh, no, what were they last year? They, I think they were 3D printed from recyclable materials. These, these are new trophies. We haven't seen the trophies for this year. Very cool. Extra back. Disappeared after uh, the, you know, the first couple of... The, I think it was the first season. And uh, nice to have him back, I think. Interesting that he chose to come back. I love the fact he said Carlos had to persuade him a bit, but I think he, Extra loves a race. Recycled ocean plastic. There we go. I, I thought I remembered correctly. Recycled ocean plastic, and then uh, I think 3D printed into these these incredible trophies. Fantastic. I always think it's a bit harsh though when it's a double header because they've got all of about two seconds to enjoy this podium oh, you, celebration, yeah, yeah. and then the attention turns to tomorrow, uh, and that's it. The moment's gone. The celebrations are over, and it's all about preparing for the race tomorrow. Extra and Sand celebrating uh, like a win. Look, Molly's running off look, towards the rest of the team. Going to give them a soak in if she can. Under the ropes. Go on, go and get them. Kevin Hansen chilling up on the top. They can, of course, have a drink of the champagne uh, out here because it's not champagne in Saudi Arabia. And uh, that will allow them to have a couple of drinks if they want to tonight. But non-alcoholic. And uh, to be fair, these pro drivers, as I say, they, they wouldn't be having a drink anyway if they knew they were racing again tomorrow. So as you say, Nicky, double head. One or two. It, it's always a bit like... Oh. Well, it depends <laughs> on the driver. Don't give away I, the I know one or two might, but yeah, we're not going to name names. We're not going to name names. Look at that. Look how stoked Veloce are. 
Yeah, and you know, good for them. Uh, it, it, it's been a, a challenging time, I think, in, in Extreme at some certain points uh, over the years. They deserve this moment. Yeah, it's their first ever win. So, they, you know, they, they would want to take it uh, in a different way. They've had a top qualifier spot before, but they haven't had a win. So they'll want to win one on track. But I have to say, with this driver pairing, I'm pretty sure they could get that done this season. Team shot on the top step of the podium with that incredible backdrop as well. I love our podium, big see-through panel that allows us to uh, check out the scenery, the incredible locations we get to go and race. But a win in round one for Veloce. So let's take a look at how the championship standing looks. So it's 26 points for Veloce Racing, five points ahead of Aciona Sainz XE team. Then behind, six points behind on 15 points, RXR, Rosberg X Racing, X44, Vida Carbon Racing are in P4 with GMC Hummer, EV, Chip Ganassi Racing on 11 points. Then Neon McLaren Extreme E, eight points that were in the redemption race. Carl Cox on six and JBXE fourth. Ad Cooper on second, two points, and final one point on Andretti. Brilliant round one here in Saudi Arabia. We will be back again very early in the morning for Europe for round two. Thanks to Nikki Shields and Laura Winter. We'll see you tomorrow.